What you do? I kind of wish that we were actually reviewing Aliens vs. Predator this week because then the intro would have directly correlated with the quality of, of the, the game. game. <laughs> What's up, bitches? I'm DJ Wheat. This is week 203. It sounded like something of, was wrong with the flux capacity. I don't, I don't know what happened there, but uh, there was... User got, error. There were floaters uh, on your SCSI. What's up, guys? Uh, welcome to week 203. Hopefully, uh, well, that will be our only snafu of the uh, of the evening and we can get on audio with, uh, with isn't business. synced now oh audio is out of sync well yes, that's i i don't i don't know what refresh we're uh we're not worthy refresh. worthy of looking at anyway so it's because we're we have actually the faces for radio as long as you can you know, hear us it's all we, good I, we're actually talking some. faster it's not watch, that it's not synced we're talking this. we're talking faster watch and this. like time is catching up to us Wa watch what i on. do here watch when it, it's going to go black for a second Right, like that, and you don't hear the EG music anymore. You just hear the sweet, soothing, vo uh, you know, sounds of soothing. You know, us. Is a matter of perspective. Of I us. Think. It is kind of a, a matter of perspective, but then you go like that, and you go like that, and then like that, and maybe now everything is back Great. to normal. So now, for the past three weeks, I'm interested. I want to know what Chicago Fame Girl looks like. She's on the <laughs> show, I think. Girls, what show? He hears the word girl and must see her. She was. Yeah, isn't that right? I want to know what she looks like. Isn't that? Am I? Yeah. See, and actually, it's so funny because Chicago Fame Girl was watching the show last week, right? Yeah. And, and for three I didn't, weeks, now, I, didn't I just know, noticed her on I didn't, the scene, and I didn't know, but I was actually reading Kotaku today, and they they did a live blog of uh, of the tester. And I was reading the comments and she had actually commented to sort of like, you know, I guess retort a little bit to what the live blogger had said. And I and I had said I responded to uh, Chicago Fame Girl and I said, you know, the number one rule of reality television and this is reality television is don't Google yourself. Don't Google yourself. So now do I need to Google her, huh? Well, I, don't, I mean... I'm that's, gonna go, I'm gonna Google you, Chicago fame girl. The number to one. See. Uh, yeah, what is the tester? I don't even know. What the it's fuck the so tester the tester is. is on the PSN. It's like it's like PlayStation's original <laughs> original programming. programming, pretty much. Why yeah. The fuck, do they have original? Pro Maybe they should work on fucking original ass games. I don't. Well, they're they've got a couple. <laughs> they've got out, two. Actually. They got they've some got coming two. up. I will give it to them <laughs> there. But fuck, dude. So uh, yeah, um, um, uh, I'm, I've got to see it. I've got to see it. Chicago Fame Girl is, and look at that. I will uh, start the download, and two days later, when it's completed, I will uh, sit and enjoy it. <laughs> All right. As you can see, we've definitely started off uh, just like uh, just hey, like we. Thanks, do. the pirate bar, because some what? fucking douchebag told me I looked like a fat fucking wheat. <laughs> that was Haley. <laughs> wheat and I are probably the Haley. same weight, dude. We probably are actually. The now, only difference yeah. is you're fucking a ho 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 jolly green fucking giant, so you can what fucking can I like say? disperse it more. What can I say? What can I say? Uh, all right, before we get into the news of the week, uh, again, welcome to week two hundred three of Epilepsy Gaming. I'm DJ Wheat. Joining me as always, Force and Nice Guy Ed. Tonight we're reviewing Bioshock Two. Very excited for that. Uh, we we sat on it for an extra week to make sure that everyone has played it, and you know, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I I think at this point, like it's pretty much. It's going to be, there could be some spoilers, right? I mean, well, maybe, maybe, there's going to be spoilers. necessarily story spoilers, but definitely we got to talk about some of the end. Right. I, I definitely feel I'm like. I'm going to talk about the game all the way through. So if you haven't okay. beat the game, fucking fuck you. 
And wow. There are going to be spoilers. I guess I guess there you go. All right, there we go. So when we, start, when we start talking about Bioshock 2, if you haven't beat the game, just go ahead and turn out and fucking whatever. Turn out. Turn out. Turn out. Tune out. Whatever. Turn out. Turn on. Whatever. Turn off. <laughs> And do now. Calm, All right, calm we got, down. We got like we, you moron, you moron. Yeah, we have like a twenty-page script tonight instead yes. of usual too. Yeah, so I think we got this spoiler warning across, and it's not like we're going to be like. All of a sudden, at the end, is like you fight a giant shark at the end. Ha! I got you. Uh, which is awesome. I really by the did want to fight that a shark, shark sequence. Like, when you fought the shark was awesome. I mean, personally, the the shark topus mini boss was pretty sweet, but the giant shark at the end, fucking the Jaws music is awesome. It is the bomb? <laughs> you rammed it with your boat. <laughs> <laughs> no, first you had to like send Harpoon, out an electronic yeah. pulse. Remember? So, yeah. Fucking and then guy you with come dreads. Up and then you can, like, ram guy. He's like, look at this pulse. It makes a fucking shark jump out of the water. It's oh, like dude, the I Italian played the Jamaican shit out of that guy. game. That and GoGo Thirteen. I played a lot when they first came out. I don't know why. Yep. I know why. Being dominated. dominated. GoGo had blood. That was an excuse. GoGo to had play blood. That and one. GoGo had the sex scene, like when you wanted to like refresh your health. He'd like take the girl to the hotel room and he'd yeah, pull, that's he'd pull it, down in the, the little thing. Yeah, yeah, dude. I'm sure in the history they, of EG, you have mentioned that at least ten, thirty, times. thirty. I think thirty. Go well, think 30. about it. At the time, dude, like <laughs> you were well, seeing, like you were only, You're you were only imagining that like Mario was waxing Peach. Like you got to actually see Glogo get some play, dude. And I so. know my Jamaican accent sucks, guys. You don't have to tell me that. Let's go on. Let's do news of the week. All right, five pages of goody goody news of the week. So uh, we better get started. And, and first off. We're going to talk a little bit more about it later on, uh, of course, but uh, StarCraft 2 beta is here. Uh, we're going to have initial thoughts later on, but emails are still being sent out to those who opted in or had a BlizzCon beta key. And also, uh, I would definitely recommend, if you haven't, to at least log into your Battle.net account because there were a lot of people that didn't get a notification but had access to the beta. Uh, so check to see if it's there. For many people, it just magically appeared. Uh, if you want to check out some coverage, if you didn't get in the beta, uh, check out TeamLiquid.net. They have like a shitload of live stream going of super awesome players. And I was just able to sit and watch for, you know, a, a good few hours at work and just kind of like pick up a lot of a lot of stuff just uh, watching those guys you know what ed fuck uh, you dude fuck you how can you say that about uh, oh wait i am excited see, about this though do you see battle net being I something need, that you enjoy using you know what i i play? Uh, the only thing that seems to be missing and again we're going to go into a little bit more detail later on but i feel like the only thing that's missing is old battle net had like chat rooms so we could have the 519 chat room you know like a lot of like uh, a lot of StarCraft players will just hang out almost like Battle.net's like an IRC client to them. Um, I've heard that said a lot. Um, so, Like as in it's a feature that we'll use a lot or you remember no, the old it's one not having there. it? It's not there. There's a, like, there is chat. There's like party chat. You bring people to parties, but then like you bring those party members into games and then you can create custom games. So, there's no like just channel you can just leave open all the time and be chatting back and forth and why wouldn't they include that i don't know but the interface is really nice so i like it i'm uh, sure does I, it, does it all the way like, dude I, I know everybody they're just in love with it aren't is they? it it's superior like to greatest. steam well, do, you, do you want me to just is talk it, about it all right no, now well or that's we the wait? question I don't is know. it superior to steam what battle, battle net? um in terms of style it is but Steam, Steam is, is totally not different. Pretty. Steam is not pretty. I will well, not say right, that. Right, right. And, uh, and, you know, like, honestly, I've never gotten Steam's fucking in-game friend shit to work ever. Ever, ever, fucking ever. In every game I ever That's play. Weird because I actually like those notifications. Oh, I, I like it me, never. I right and so it. I don't like, you know, so like, I use Steam to get cheap games and <laughs> play them like, or, like you in know, the, in a the ranking match or something. In the ranking of greatest things, like, in the world, like, the will and the fire and freaking... Portable water and street. Is Starcraft two? <laughs> yeah, up Starcraft there. two. In you the know list. what? I, How does it compare to portable listen, water? Listen, guys, I'll say this, <laughs> and then we'll move on, and we'll talk about it more later. But what I will tell you is that what it hasn't done, Ed, is it hasn't totally fucking failed, right? Okay. It it it, it feels like 
what it should feel like. I think a lot of people are very impressed with the balance so far. Um, that that you know there are definitely changes, but they're you know it's an evolution of the game. And and I've heard more people just talking about playing the game like they play StarCraft than I have going, oh my god, this fucking sucks. This blows. I uh, I hate this. This totally sucks. You know, sure people are like this is overpowered or whatnot, but people generally are talking way more positively than they than negative. So uh, we'll see. We'll talk more about it in a, in a little bit. But let's get on through. Well, so. on uh, Steam this week, our like deal of the week news is uh, you won't get this on Battle.net, right? You won't get it. You deal won't of the get week. this unbelievable deal. So Steam, I guess, has a one up already. <laughs> it does have a one up, and I'm actually sad that I don't have a machine that can handle it. But Shattered Horizons is free this weekend, nine ninety nine if you choose to buy it. But it's like the screenshots just look dynamite. It's one of those games to show off your beefy. Uh, PC rig, you gotta have Vista. I got rid of Vista. It sucked. I'm like XP superior, and I haven't ponied up wow. for seven yet. So I I I was like seven, but uh, I've heard a lot about this game. Uh, would you try it? You have I, to if have... I if I had if I had oh, seven on my right. machine Only, right now. That's right. I do it. I'm not putting Vista on for it though. And aren't they having like a expansion pack come out? Isn't one? I think this... that's why they're promoting it. It's because right. of the new content. Hmm. Uh, that's that's nice. I haven't I've not seen this in action, but I have heard uh, several individuals that uh, are big PC gamers that watch the show at least checked it out. Said that generally they pretty much liked it. It's um, a first person shooter, right? And it, and it's it's like in it's in space, so it's almost descent like. You know, you can move around in full like gravity, and you can like attach to walls and run on them, and then oh, and nice. then you can like you know move around in sounds in fun anti gravity or lack thereof. Dude. Uh, Yes. Really? What? This next one? Yeah. Yes. Capcom. You are so jealous. There's I'm there's not. two 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 news items in this I'm one. Not. Capcom has officially announced Street Fighter Four coming to the iPhone. What the fuck that dude? How like really? Do you know what you know what the the on screen you know the on screen controls look sort of uh they almost take up too much of the screen. But the game looks dynamite. It it <laughs> I mean it, it looks like it's gonna Street look Fighter dynamite, Four scaled dude, down. But like the the sad part about it is that no matter what, I'll buy it. Just it's, only like, it's only like three yeah. button though, isn't it? Actually, it's four, and is I don't even four? know how it works. But it's, I don't know. It'll be, it'll be interesting. You know, what they're also thinking they, about bringing it out to the PC. Uh, PSP would work a little bit better. Uh, it looks like a punch, kick, and then an SP and an S button. Really? Yeah. I did see the SP. I don't I was wondering have, what that was. I don't have a, uh, a screenshot of it right now. I showed it later or special earlier. Punch but, or hey, special hey, kick. Get, get the hell out I'm wondering of it. Or second choose. punch or second I, I kick. I think it's like a context you sensitive can, where sometimes it kicks and sometimes it punches. So, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's exactly how it goes. So, um, in, in what could be called the worst kept secret since the PSP Go at E3 2009, the already known three Third Strike characters have been made official for Super Street Fighter 4 by Capcom. Dudley, Ibuki, and Makoto, uh, they have been confirmed with just one more, quote, unofficial new character to go. And, you know, I realize that Capcom was hoping to slow leak this info over time you know to really like build hype before the release of super street fighter 4 but at this point it's almost like it's almost laughable because all the news sites try to pretend like they don't already know and so they're like capcom releases this brand new trailer blah 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 <laughs> although know, we like, read about street. that a but week everybody's ago like we know already like seriously yeah um so um i, I wish they would give us new info like you know li hey here's a walk through the lobby system okay that we don't know about we right. know all well, the did characters you see, I mean, was it on kotaku where i saw like capcom had mailed him like a glove holding a rose yes like i do think they had intended to like slow leak and give hints about who's coming and it was just like bam everyone right and at that point everyone would have known already but like it was i mean guys it was I want to say like December of last year when we heard these fucking rumors about I'm every like, yeah, character, all these characters. and every single one has been right. So you know, it's just like it—it it has to be a marketing nightmare. I mean, I get it. You know, keep up with it. They probably like budget it all out and everything. But either way, I'm stoked for the game. It's just really funny how it's sort of slow, slow leaked like that. So well, and getting all that info out so fast makes me kind of almost annoyed that this happened without me knowing. But um, RE5's first uh, downloadable content came out this yes. week. I did not know that. Yes. I, I knew it was coming, but I didn't know it. It was just like, it was like this Wednesday they release it. Yeah, I didn't know it was Xbox coming out for weeks. ever and read the things? The I news? did the day it came out. 
there but I mean, I didn't know there was any was anticipation for it. I, Anyways, I it's out. See that shit. I'm uh, excited that it's five bucks. Like I was worried that it was gonna be fifteen bucks. So uh, at five bucks, I'm gonna get it. I'll uh, probably be bringing a short little review about it next week. But it also comes with like a new revamped mercenary modes, unlockable characters, and the classic camera. Which oh I yeah, don't know I saw. Why anyone would want to do that unless I there's like a, that. unless there's an achievement for it. But uh, at five bucks, I'm isn't there, uh, isn't there I'm like stoked to revisit Chris, it. A Chris and Jill story that goes on in there. Or no, yeah, that's what like, it is. Yeah. It, well, no, it's the Shiva like flashback. She talks about how she got to the mm. scene, and you get to play it. Nice. And so uh, I love when I get to chalk another one up for Force Called It. But I totally said a while back we were I talking I, about I, I totally PS3 don't versus get this 360 because if you remember this conversation we were having was about like well I'll always play it on 360 you know because of achievements you're like well I'll play it on PS3 because it'll always have be superior because a Blu-ray and I had said at that time no you know a game developer is going to make the same game with the same assets for both machines and uh, it turns out I was right and uh, Lost Planet Two is. Uh, taking the hit because it's not on blu-ray they talked about a bunch of content that they had to cut out of the game how are you were you saying like the it didn't matter really for the 360? no i like, said you would rather play a game on the ps3 than the 360 because i no. I, I, said I, remember. I would rather play a 360 version They're like well the ps3 version will be better because it's blu-ray and i said no a developer is going to go with the weakest one they're not going to develop you know two separate games they're going to share assets and it turns out it was true no you know the ps3 version could have had a ton more content if the 360 would have had it too. Now what they say is, well, luckily we can release these extra levels as downloadable content, meaning we can milk you for more money. I don't, but I don't know who I'm to more angry at, like Force for kind of being like flaunting, like ha ha, or or Capcom for saying, yeah, so we didn't have storage. You got to be pissed because at I want to ask you something. Because I think it's bunk, dude. I'd rather just buy it on the PS3 then and have all the extra content on there instead of now having to pay like. 10 I don't think that Microsoft yeah, we will have to nickel should and dime. be rewarded for having a failure in HD DVD. I don't know what you're talking. About. How are they being I rewarded? I think they. I think they could have made. Being rewarded? I think. What do you mean? They're not being rewarded. Sony's being penalized for being well. A gamers yeah. are, gamers yeah. are being Sony, penalized. Sony's I see being that penalized. Right, fine. Being Force is being rewarded because he gets We're to come on and so say, "I much told money you so." At it to, to sabotage Microsoft's HD. It bums me out, though. I mean, it does bum me out. And you want to know what another problems that they talked about? Bullshit. You know, Microsoft gets like a flat well, fee, no matter how many discs they sell. And Capcom, they're yeah. like, well, why don't you just spread it across two discs? Because Capcom actually loses money. You know, Microsoft doesn't give them any kind of cutback if it's got to be multiple discs. Either way, to hear a company say, yeah, oh, oh, shit, man. We needed like 300 more megabytes to add this entire mode that would offer an additional eight hours to the game. But fuck, man, we only got dual layer DVD, so we're going to have to cut it out. You'll pay 10 bucks for it in a month. That sucks. You will. I won't. <laughs> I won't either. Remember, Lost Planet 2 is not the one I'm if more Lost Planet for. 2 is as good as I think it's going to be. You'll buy it on the, oh on the PS3 instead? No, I'm buying it on the 360 because both machines are going to have to I, pay you know for what? the downloadable You know content. what? I'm, I'm just going to buy that game on the PS3 just to irk you guys and play it with all of the I would be stuff. so pissed. At <laughs> <laughs> all right. So with the recent news of Halo 2 online shutting down, people are wondering if Halo 3 will see the same fate once Halo Reach comes out. But Bungie assures us that it won't happen. And, you know, this is kind of cool because you don't hear this happen very often, but they even give nod to MLG and say that the pro scene is still reliant on Halo 3 and that they would never put that in jeopardy. And it's not very often well, that you hear a company I mean, say something like that. Think about how long it took them to t take down the Halo 2 servers or whatever. I mean, they well, left them up for a long fucking time. A long time. Yeah. So, and not like, only that, but why would yeah. you think that? It's not like Call of Duty 4 servers went down I, when Call of Duty 5. I don't know. Or Call why of Duty 6. Think? I mean, you know, it's good to hear, even though I wasn't really worried at all, like uh, like you guys. And we'll, we're going to talk a little bit more about Halo Reach later on. Uh, but if anyone was like, oh, my God, Halo 3 is going away. Nope. Apparently. No, we didn't put it in the news, but apparently a freaking EA was like, bam, we're shutting down these. 15 games. Sorry if you bought them. They like talk about all the servers that you'll know. <laughs> there are a lot. Access multiplayer. Like every single one of their years was sports games and like the Godfather and Mercenaries and there were <laughs> Godfather too. Fuck. Oh my God, dude. So, uh, you know, I can really care less about who the companies are. PSM 3 gave Final Fantasy 13 a 70%. Games Masters gave it an 80%. It's somewhere in the 
you know, the mid to high 80s right now on Metacritic. And, you know, the question was, isn't this supposed to be like the greatest that, godsend why ever? Is that's so light. I don't know. Because it's a link that you could click on to go to another web page if you wanted to. Yes. Oh, is that how that worked? <laughs> Fucking cut and paste. But uh, the director of the game, let me butcher his name, uh, Moto Tariyama had uh, responded to uh, the low <laughs> review saying that uh, we think many reviewers are looking at Final Fantasy 13 from a Western point of view. When you look at most Western RPGs, they just dump you in a big open world and let you do what you like. There's truth. And it becomes very difficult to tell a compelling story when you're given that much freedom. Now, there's a couple ways I can look at that as, yeah, you know, Final Fantasy 13 is supposed to be very linear. Like, you know, 20 to 30 hours before you even get a side quest. And uh, it's true that you can tell a really compelling story when you have no options. But at the same token, Bioware shows us that. You know what? I knew you were going to bring Bioware up. And I'm going to say, like, yes. And that's what, exactly what he's talking about. He's talking about the Western approach to to open world RPGs. Fallout, you know. Um, but uh, the comment is it dude, becomes difficult to tell a compelling story when you do dude, that. Dude, hold like, on a second. Okay. That not you but, find but, ten, hold on, hold on. Find ten Mass Effect open? 2 story was, was amazing to me, right? Okay. But you got to realize, like, the way I experienced it is, like, they they did not have any sort of, like, pace to the game at all. What do you mean? You set your own pace. Okay. That's a, that's a Western open world RPG. What's wrong with that? There's n there's not, but what Did I'm telling you is that all this great story okay. that I experienced did so not like happen during the fucking 30 hours that I was doing loyalty missions and fucking mining minerals was, off of a planet. Was 10? I think all was he Final said... Final Fantasy 10, a Western style open RPG? No. It felt that way to me. I felt like I can do whatever the fuck I want to do. I'd run around, cat but monsters. But that was, that was like, way more like Final Fantasy 11 than it was like... You know, whatever. So Final I Fantasy mean, I don't know. That was also something about it. Worlds, like, fight, he's yeah. talking about uh, fuck him. It, but well, just so you know, he's not. He's not saying Ed, like anyone none is of that worse. Stuff exists guys. in Final Fantasy Thirteen. No, none of that. You know, going back and jumping. There's no towns in the whole game. I mean, none of that. Um, experience that we had bouncing constantly back and forth around worlds. Apparently, I, I for a long get, ass time. I don't get. Are you guys saying that what he's saying is bad, or you don't understand, or it's? I'm saying odd? that the, I'm saying I, that the excuse he gave by saying it's very difficult to tell a compelling story, yeah, is weak. That the, the, that the Dude, reviews are wrong okay. because like even the, it, it's a Western there is no Bioware game that is going to be as long as the fucking story of this game. He's wrong. I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong because Final Fantasy will deliver you story consistently throughout the experience and you will clock in. If you clocked in 30 hours on Final Fantasy 13 and then you clocked in 30 hours on BioWare, you would get 25 hours of story. Okay. And BioWare you would not get 25 That's hours fine. and, That's and fine. But, but for him to say that the reviews are bad or wrong, the reviewers are wrong because they like a Bioware type RPG. Like that's bullshit. No, dude. I think I, you got it. Uh, man, where do is I? Is that not what this? he's saying? I, I mean, is that not what I he did, said? I would defend this to my grave, but is that not what he said? That's what he said, right? The reviewers. Do you believe? They gave him such uh, let me a ask low you a question. Could, because, Ed, let me because ask you a question. They're Westerners. Do you think every gaming journalist out there has experience playing like old school Final Fantasy? I would maybe fucking hope so, dude. I don't think Otherwise, so. Don't I don't think so. I think the gaming dude. journalism has come from a lot of people nowadays that are like, they didn't do that shit. Like, uh, I, there's a lot of people in gaming journalism that like were not in it way back in the day. What does that matter? Why are we even having this conversation? Because then what he's saying is exactly right. You know, like, I maybe, mean, a JRPG okay, okay, is are not a Bioware. People are correcting me and saying, maybe he's right? not saying that they were wrong. He's just trying to rationalize the bad score. That And, and yeah. So I'll give you that. Or maybe your game. I mean, force. Or maybe your game. You, or maybe know, your game's not all as cracked up to be that Final you think Fantasy it is. Final Fantasy 13 is not going to be the godsend that we all thought it was. And that's what I'm saying. I'm excited to play it. I'm gonna play uh, yeah, the I mean, shit out of no it. No matter what it says, it doesn't stop but me from wanting to play it. But maybe it's not the fucking end all be all that he fucking in his head. He's like, this is my fucking masterpiece. 
I don't know that any of them. I mean, did they ever say that Final Fantasy here's 13 what, here's was going to be read. like this masterpiece? Here's what I read him say. I read him say, you know, we don't have any towns in this game because it's very difficult to render towns at the quality we want to render stuff at. So I think it's more, we can't tell a compelling story because it would take a lot of time. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the what I wish he would come out and say. I think at the end of the day that it will sell a fuckload. Oh, yeah, it will. And better I will love it. it. better. And it will get a good review out of me more than likely because it's Final Fantasy and you'll get to see what I, these I'm guys still, say. I'm it. still blown away that Battlefield Bad Company got a better review than Final Fantasy 13. I, I'm that not. That is weird, dude. I'm not. I'm blown away. Maybe, Why are you blown away by one publication you, that, that, I mean... It's because it's because Western gamers like really how do like you even shooters score that shit? RPGs, Isn't that like right? why we don't ever get? I don't I, you know, know I don't know how you Whatever. how you compare the two, but yeah, it's pretty. It's, yeah, it's I still don't know boggles my mind. To I see mean, it. it's like point two, and you're like, oh my god, this game must be so much fucking better than this other game. Ah. You know, like I I think what Battlefield Bad Company Two is going to have going for it is that it's going to be a huge improvement over fucking something like that. So maybe he's looking at it from that perspective, and then like maybe it does deserve a better score because it's more improved. So Final Fantasy There's, Thirteen is like a downgrade. We do know though when Kingdom Hearts comes out. It's gonna be I don't know. There game. hasn't been a next gen greatest fucking game ever. Final Fantasy game, but there's been a next gen bad bad company game. There hasn't been it was a next horrible. gen Kingdom Hearts. Nope, there hasn't. So in other Final yes. Fantasy thirteen news, probes into some questionable screenshots have come out from both games and Square Enix. Now, basically, these screenshots came out that showed exactly the same screen, yet the input buttons were clearly different from the PS3 to the 360. So gamers immediately questioned how you would achieve such a screenshot from an actual game footage as the screenshots were presented. Because it's like... All the characters were in the same animation. The same damage numbers were coming up. Like they, they were, exactly. they were bull Everything shots. Was the exact yeah. same. So uh, those who saw Final Fantasy Thirteen at X Ten say that they couldn't see much difference, but they also weren't looking at a side by side comparison. So we'll have to wait until release to find out if there is a major difference between the two. And woo 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 woo. No, we won't. What was that? <laughs> That was like the gayest that sound. Just, that I've was ever just heard, breaking dude. news. Breaking news. <laughs> That's his like. Come over here and dance with me. Oh my god, I, I've got screenshots. I don't know how well these are actually going to go across, but... Um, whoa, whoa. <laughs> There's a little, like, mini one over there. Alright, let's... Let's, uh... Let's, let's see let's the kill this, Okay. Here we go. Uh, this is a PS3 screenshot. Okay. And then I'm going to flip to the 360. Boom. Okay. Now, uh, honestly, I was going to say probably on your computer you can't tell the difference, but there's definitely no, they may, maybe they I can think, because I we're think, in HD now. I think what you got to look at is you got to look at the hair. I think the hair and like the arms tell the biggest story. Now I'm going to switch back here this to the PS3, PS3 version again. Bam! Look at his hair and look at her okay, hair. Now look at how soft the hair is. Okay, and then we're going to go back to 360. Bam! Jaggy hair. Jaggy hair. Fucking PS2 version right here. So now I have to decide. Hold on, hold on. Do I want soft hair or do I want jaggy hair and achievements? That is actually going right, to be a real so dilemma. So check this out. This is the PS3 version this of this This one shot. you can really tell the difference. You can okay. really tell the difference on this. Okay. And here is the 360 shot. Bam. Now the lighting you'll see is almost like what I said to these guys is it appears like it's lost its shine. It definitely has a softer look on the yeah, PS3. Yeah, it has a, on the, it, it 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 lost it. There's the shine on the PS3. And then there's the dullness on the 360. Now, yeah, there it is. 572p res on 360, 720p on PS3. For all those times that I defended Metal Gear Solid, I defended Final Fantasy XIII, and I said, you cannot pull those games off on the 360 the way that they were intended. I finally get to have my you I told you so You can pull them moment. off, dude. It's the game. Well, apparently it's the, they can't. It's the, going back to our first fucking story, it's the, it's the story of the game that makes it compelling, not the goddamn pixels in the fucking dude's hair. You know what? That's but, yeah, but, I think it's but, bullshit. But let me say, right. let me tell you, okay. I never intended to buying this on the 360. I've always intended to buy it on the PS3. I I will be the jaggy haired dude. All right, I will come over and talk about uh, how jaggy yeah, the it, hair it, was. It, I was like, it like, totally ruined the game for me. The point Seven. being is that you could say that, but at the end of the day, why go with the inferior version? 
Okay, I sat here and I played Bayonetta on 360 because that was the superior version, right? I'm pretty sure even Mike made fun of it a few times on the PS3. I know that a lot of people did. Well, you know what? Fuck you. Now is the time to say you just got fucking Bayonetted. There it is. Here's what we need jaggy to do, though. Hair. How many, okay. your how jaggy many arguments did we get into? Hair. Listen, how many arguments did we Three get into fucking about, DVDs. How, uh, here's about what how we're going to do, Wheat. On the day we purchase it, we're, we're both going to come home with the game, and we're going to see who's playing it first. <laughs> After you sit through your required two and a half, you hour know what? Install. Yeah, that's I don't. I'll there. take my the two and a half hour install. Suck. That's fine. But this is my point. because at least when I'm playing many, it, it will be a 720p resolution and not fucking some shit that you would see on the fucking Wii. How many arguments have we gotten in about how like oh graphics doesn't matter? It's gameplay. It's gameplay. Look at the Wii. It's it matters play. because all the 360 X bots of the world. This they is, all go ape shit over it. Oh, PS3 inferior version. Ah, nah, nah. It's time for the fucking PS3 fanboys to rise. Take this and go and shove it in your 360 loving buddy's face and make him eat it. Okay? Because you may not get another chance for a long time. Okay? <laughs> That's we finally why got one. <laughs> He's finally got one argument okay? on his side. Actually, you this will get a it. chance, dude, because you got God of this War is it. and Last Guardian, dude. Like, exclusive titles to the PS3. That's why I said dude, when you were, like, like, talking about, like, you know, PS3 needs to make yeah, better yeah, yeah. games. I know. Like, hey, they got two. Coming. They got, got two. God of War and, and Last, uh, Guardian, Last God Guardian, War. dude. That shit, like, that's going to be another, like, PS3 bot fucking stand up and be like, suck my fucking uh, controller, we'll, we'll homie. See. So they mentioned cross chat game finally coming to uh, PS3, being able to talk to each other across games. And uh, the weird thing was is that the official PlayStation magazine said that cross chat gaming is coming, but it might be limited to paid subscriptions. Now, my question was, and obviously you're going to say, hell no. Is like, would that be something you would pay for? Like, I don't even know how many times I've ever Fuck wanted no. to like chat with people across different games. You know, usually we either chat in game or don't chat at all. Well, or don't you just start a chat channel? Yeah, well, you can on the Xbox Live. Right, it's easy, but on the PS3, you might have to pay for it. No, oh. like, would That's that lame. be something you would pay for? Fuck I don't no, think so. If I can get it free on my Xbox. So, uh, not that I'm putting, I guess my PS3 hat's still on, but like, I think that this is pretty out of context because when you consider it, if honestly, if PlayStation comes at you and like, one, this is our subscription, you get cross-party chat for one ninety nine a month, and that's it. Then I'm going to be like, PlayStation, you're fucking stupid. But I have to feel like they're going to, they're looking for higher. What do you higher... think they could offer that would compel you if I still had access to the store? You want to know what? I'll tell you what. Game. I'll tell you what. This is what they could offer me. Some sort of subscription service that would allow me to rent PSN titles. Really? Absolutely. A Netflix style, like, I want to. I'm allowed to download one PS One well, game that, or that something, one like, or dump like game one came with that garbage like, dump came with that would, it three I would, times. I would be all over that shit. Like I think that Sony has to think outside the box I because all they can do is copy some... Microsoft, right? So they've got to say what can they do that would be one bigger. Here is your free R and D, Sony. As a gamer, I would pay twenty bucks a month if I had the ability to just like, oh, you know, I have to get rid of Burn Zombies or Burn. You know, oh well, but. Um, I'm going to try this game out. And then I want, well, I want to keep this you know, one actually, forever. That so was gonna... why I was kind of excited about Microsoft's game room, except for the fact that I don't really want to play any 30 year old games. I do, dude. I was thinking the other day, I really want to play Deception 3 again. Remember that game with the traps? <laughs> I'm talking, yeah, Deception. I'm talking dude, Root Beer fucking... Tapper and Frogger. Oh. That's not <laughs> Deception 3 30 years old. Kangaroo. I'd play Kangaroo. Either way, I would definitely not pay just for that. I never, I don't know why I would ever use that. Like, Dude, I, I thought this was the now. biggest news story of the week and then it was shot down. So I find this article to be incredibly suspicious or just plain stupid, you guys. So if it was in any other mag, I wouldn't think twice about it. But this shit came from Nintendo Power. All right, the official Nintendo magazine. Now you're playing with power. Now you're playing with power. Dude, there was a day... There that was, was the a day when Nintendo. Oh my! Oh my God, dude! Remember when the Nintendo fan club had like an eight-page flyer that came to you like every, yeah. like every, you know, once 
every three months. And then it like, then it, you got this Nintendo power and it was like 18 pages and it showed like Super Mario Brothers 2. And, and it you're had like, like the fold out oh, map of, yeah, yeah, the fold, the fold out, out map of Zelda Metroid or Zelda, Zelda, Zelda or like, something. Yeah, right. It's, it's awesome, not, dude. you're, you're right. It's not made by Nintendo anymore. So basically there was an image attached to a story, which was about Netflix coming to the Wii. So what's the big deal? The Wiimote being held clearly said we too on it. Like we squared. We squared. So Chris Slate, the uh, NP editor, says the image came from a Photoshop job from the web. This image allegedly got in there before Nintendo contracted with Future US, the company that they are that now handles the the magazine's publication. So there's nothing else different about the Wiimote except for that little tube. But for a mistake like this to actually miss Nintendo editors, or in this case, you know, Future US editors and quality control control, I find absolutely boggling. And even more so, a company coming out and saying, "Yeah, we use assets that we pull off the yeah, internet for our off, magazines." Pull off Photoshop. Yeah. It was like maybe I will go download the fucking one. Like the 16 year old who like makes a PDF magazine every month and does the exact same thing. Like you're making me pay six dollars for it. I don't get it. So they claim they have deleted the image. They've cleaned it up. And Chris Slate assures us that he has no knowledge of a new system in the works. So that would be the shittiest here's thing a, for it too. Here's the here's the funny thing. So like force messages me within our script and he like in big bold letters he goes and i even have it right here he says look at the talk pat talk back in this we too articles the comments he's like there is a youtube video about a new wheat donut not sure what it says since i don't have volume but maybe funny for you right so i'm like what the fuck how could that have any relevance at all it said, you like know? wheat and showed a donut i'm like oh baby and it was a shot of this news, it was like a rec- news, uh, you know, recording, and they were talking about, it was like from Alabama or something, they were talking about, like, Krispy Kreme is going healthy, and they're offering these wheat donuts. But what was funny about it is these guys from the news group, or from the from the news station, pulled a graphic off the internet. It's like a funny graphic that people have. It says, Krispy Kreme's so good you'll suck dick for them, or something like that. <laughs> or you'll... So good you'll suck dick for uh, something like that. And, like, you could clearly see it in the news broadcast. So it was the same kind of thing. That's what you get for pulling up images <laughs> off of the fucking internet. Uh, Why would you eat a wheat donut? No, we too. That sounds awful. So uh, Sony kind of talked about, you know, we talked about how games pretty much being developed the same for both systems. You know, cutting content just so it could fit on 360. And Sony was talking about how they need to start bragging about, and I agree with them, that they are the superior machine. And they had talked about how, you know, third-party publishers that focus on the PS3C, you know, gains from it. And they talked about Batman Arkham Asylum, how it gave exclusive content. You know, it was on Blu-ray, Joker-only levels. The ads focused on it, saw a healthier sale on the PS3 than they did the 360 version. I agree. You know, they did. We, we, we talked about it at the time, how it was being outsold on the PS3 and said, you know, that the future of video games is not exclusives anymore. It's right. third parties and third parties need to start making, you know, the exclusivity is going to come in whose box comes up, whose logo comes up at the end of the ad. You know, if you really want right, to do well right. on the PS3, make sure PS3 what is was, what we see at the and end. And what it. was was it prototype that was like like it was always a fight. You'd see yeah. one 360 commercial, then you'd see one yeah. PS3 commercial, and then there's a couple games like that at the end of 2008. So um, I, I I have to agree with that. I mean, look at to look at just the last year and how much you know Lost Planet two. You know, all of these companies they get it, they get it. I think it's not there. They've got to figure out how to develop for both. I think that is well, the here's DLC. What I'm, here's what I think is silly is that if Lost Planet 2 came with an extra stage on the PS3, if it had that content, I would buy the PS3 version. Yeah, no I would, doubt. Yeah. I mean, if they want to see right. a healthy sale, they need to start snagging shit like that. But instead, I'm going to buy it on 360 because the 360 controller is superior. For <laughs> I agree with him. You know, I've been dude. playing the shit out of Mag, and I have to agree with him. That that controller's dude, the, so dude, touchy the compared PS3 to the 360. Controller sucks do you want to take home that that adapter and try it? I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind. As much as I'm liking Mag, and you guys were right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, from you. this is a good Jesus rumor. Freaking uh, THQ came out with a bunch of shit today, and it's rumored that at E3 this year we will see... The announcements for Saints Row 3, which has me pumped because Saints Row 2 is one of my favorite sandbox games of all time. And we might already hear news on the next Red Faction. And I don't know about you, dude. I don't really care what the story is about, who's in it. If it gives me Geomod, a new shit to blow up, 
I mean, I'm there. I'm uh, there. I'm. I'm. I, and you mean Saints Row Three? Oh no, well, Saints Row Three. Red Faction, dude. I want to but, that engine but again I think, so bad. I think or I read some comments on this, and I think people would be more excited for. They were saying, dude, if you put GeoMod in Saints Row Three, then it's over. Oh, no doubt. So that's what no I doubt. think the commenters were more excited for, which is surprising because Red Faction was a phenomenal game. I think we all talked about it in some way, it shape, or form. Yeah. But I mean, there was like no other game that gave me the experience of like, you know, perfectly sledgehammering this, you know, this tower and then putting one explosive so that it would like fall over on the rest of the shit or like the, what was it called? The demolition mode or the demolition yeah. mode. We tried to destroy as much shit as we could. I mean, time limit was awesome. there was, there was some good, there was some good times to be had with that. So I would hope that they could, you know, the Geomod's great where Red Faction failed compared to all the other People games. Of explain them to them now. what Geomod is. It just means that when you destroy shit, it had real weight and real physics, and you broke through a brick wall, and then you had to break through the pipes, and then you had to break through the outside wall, and uh, they just they fully... You know, it's like it's, it's like you guys see the havoc house. system, right? You see the havoc on everything. The havoc it makes on crack, the, dude. It makes the freaking guys go all, yeah, you know, their, their arms like go that. like this after you killed them because it's stuck on a brick. The Geomod is like that for buildings. Yeah. So it has true physics and uses true weight to like imagine that I did have this like uh, it's it was like a smokestack. And you could beat out the smokestack just perfectly to where it would, it's like chopping down a freaking tree, guys, you know? And then you'd like, you'd be like, okay, here it goes. And then you'd whack that last bit and it would like, it like fall over perfectly. And I mean, if you've never played Red Faction, uh, Red Gorilla, actually. Dude, I got it. What? From that five Dark bucks? Siders? Yeah, everyone five who bought, bucks no, right everyone now? who bought Dark Siders came with a little coat in their box. And if you put the code into the webpage, you got Red Faction for free. You just had to pay five bucks shipping and handling. Really? Is that freaking dope? So I got a copy on my way. Huh. Yeah. Because I just rented it at the time. And I'm like, I want to revisit that shit. But do you know what the big news was? What? Out of THQ, not, not, not those sequels, but the blob is going multi-platform, dude. It really? No Which was like a big exclusive. Wii exclusive, right? Oh, yeah. And yeah. not only that, but it's going to help launch a new show on sci-fi. The blob? If any show was begging. I'm like, when I played the blob and watched my kid as this big paintball bouncing off buildings, changing them colors, I was like, that is deep. Like, I want to know <laughs> more about that universe, dude. No one that's right. It's not that deep. Me. That's funny, though. The blob, it's coming. And they uh, they didn't mention uh, Metro, but uh, a lot of people getting hyped oh for that. Oh, my God. I'm so pumped for that. The more I read dude, about the story. It's not in here, but the DirectX uh, 11 shots on PC look amazing like nothing i've never seen anything as good really i mean amazing amazing huh. what they do with it so capcom announces that over the next five weeks their psn titles will see prices slashed by 50 percent. the schedule is as follows february 18th which i think is like now, now. marvel versus capcom yes. 2 for only seven dollars and fifty cents it's a steal people go get it february 25th super street fighter 2 turbo hd remix for only seven dollars and fifty cents march 4 2010 i'm definitely buying Hell this yeah. one this, is, too, the one this is the one i'm getting on too super sure. puzzle fighter 2 turbo hd remix for only five bucks five bucks for that game. dude that i want to play my wife i want to kick dude. her last time we played i think she won five bucks for that game yeah That's we th awesome. this is a game that we used to play the shit out of on the ps1 you guys a ton now march 11th uh, age of booty for five bucks not really excited about that march 18th 1942 joint strike for only five bucks i'd probably so, get that dude the would joint, you? I would say that Capcom announces that over the next three weeks, their good PSN titles will see prices slashed by 50%. An additional two weeks will be added for titles that, honestly, I don't really give a flying fuck about. <laughs> so uh, the THQ president also wanted to uh, make a comment about cloud gaming. And I, I hear it popping up more and more. I do. And uh, says you know, that I do cloud backups, so I'm very familiar. Do with you? Me. Yeah. Well, he says that cloud, cloud gaming cloud is backup. cloud... Uh, you know, the ability of cloud gaming is going to bring gaming roaring back. Roaring. Roaring. 
Uh, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, when did gaming, it, when did gaming yeah. yeah, where, where did it go? Where did it go? And it could come roaring back. Yeah, where did it, well, where you did know, it leave? Because, maybe THQ, because we're about to have a revolution THQ, with the Natal. Dude. Because before we didn't have a way to control video games. But oh, now that Natal's coming, we're going right. to have a way to control video games, which is going to make them a lot more we're interesting. We're like a bunch of fucking He does say, though, I, you know, I, I actually, I probably believe this comment was intended to bring PC gaming roaring back. And it was right. just a generic gaming back. Right. That is but, correct. Uh, he I says so. that the years of upgrading for graphics are almost over. I mean, do you believe that? No. Can you imagine, though, a world where it doesn't matter? What? I think that those people... I mean, like, like, what do you think NVIDIA is saying about that? Ah, go fuck yourself. I'm going to keep releasing yeah. video because I think if would graphics be very don't scared. improve, then we're fucked. And you know yeah. what? In all fairness, that kind of defeats the purpose because it's like, well, wait a second. NVIDIA, ATI, IBM, these guys are the drivers behind uh, our consoles. So you eliminate NVIDIA on the PC. Well, then what the fuck happens with our like graphics capabilities of the consoles? That's where so, the like, money will have to be, hole. though, for them. That's it's where the money will have hole. to be is in the console But they don't, like, I don't know. They're not going to be able to do their they new card every three I, months shit. I think that they are making a fuckload more money in the PC market than they are. Like, I will tell you years. that I can build 50% of the cost of a new PC is just a video card. Yeah, I can get every single other piece of equipment for yeah. the cost of the video card. That's not true, and that true, bothers dude. me. For like, oh, for like dude. seventy bucks now, you can get an amazing video card. Like, video cards the have thing is, really. It's for me. We're not talking about the fucking. But it's you so know, different than Voodoo you playing the three sixty version of Final Fantasy thirteen. It's very difficult for me to pay eighty dollars for this card when I know it's like I know there's five levels higher that are better. You know, it's just it makes it tough. Like, I don't want to invest in that card. Till I can afford the top of the line at the moment, you know, and it's process. I would love to see that part go away. I, but do you get what I'm saying about if you eliminate the PC upgrading, you take those companies out? I do. I agree that those companies should be scared. They should be scared. Uh, so short and sweet, the folks behind Epic Mickey say that you can thank Kingdom Hearts for the upcoming title. Thank you. Thanks. Now I have a reason to play my Wii. The success of the Kingdom Hearts franchise, including the recently successful Birth by Sleep, has not gone unnoticed by the company. They basically take 13 paragraphs to say in this news item, we realize we have kid assets, yet if we present them right, they are still interesting to core gamers. And I think they're right. I mean, like, this guy I loves love it. Kingdom I love Hearts. Kingdom I love Hearts, Kingdom dude. Hearts. Like, it's the last great, Kingdom you know, Hearts for us awesome. the same. So I think that's a pretty big thing to be able to admit and realize. Now, other interesting tidbits from the article is that in the early year of Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts, people at Disney thought the franchise was an abomination really? and that it was destined to fail. They hated it. Huh? Like, people were seriously upset that they were doing it. Yeah. That's weak. Uh, it, it, well, the they're like, to be great. those people are like, oh, we're an idiot. Uh, Epic Disney will definitely take the characters of their universes and show them in a, quote, surprising way and then marvel was mentioned along with the note that it was far too early for any new gaming ideas direction to come out of that they completely avoided the question so uh you know i i mean disney's got the money that they could be like okay guys we are getting into gaming they've got disney interactive but i mean like seriously yeah would you i mean do so you even are you interested in it at all i mean they talked about too how it won't be a wii exclusive what Epic Mickey? That Natal and the Ark might make it possible for it to come to other systems. I don't. I don't know. I like the fact that Warren Spector's. I don't know it, if no I'd want to play. Awesome I don't know if, if they ported it. Like if they ported the Wii version. Oh, I mean, over, they'd have, like, to, they'd have they'd to upgrade have to, like, it. But I mean, I'm going to play it on the Wii no matter what. So uh, after oh, wait, practically freaking bankrupting NC Soft and taking a two year break from gaming and then flying off into space. Richard Garriott's back on the scene. I still don't understand how this man gets employed, but um, this time he's yeah. the technical director of a social media company, Austin-based Portalarium, which is going to focus on developing and publishing online social games, virtual worlds, and related services and products. Like Second Life? I guess. Is that what it is? Basically? This is what our God has fucking come to this is the guy that gave us ultima online and now he's going to be making fucking farmville like games dude. like what the fuck dude what the fuck man dude, like cocaine cut is the a pony a drug. I, how <laughs> you had the greatest game to That's ever be made ever said. you need the cocaine is a hell of a drug listen i went because. slumming i went slumming and i talked to suma and i'm like suma you need to you need to get on your future gear 
I need some news from the future, dude. News from the future. And, uh, live from the future. He brings us news from the future that Austin based Portalarium is shuttering its doors and closing after hiring former NCSoft exec Richard Garriott. <laughs> we are being dominated. <laughs> I feel cheated, dude. I feel cheated that that man brought us the greatest game ever. The greatest game ever. Hands down, the greatest game I've ever played. I mean, in a, in a top 50 list, I've. I think that Ultima would have to be number, number one. Number one. I agree, dude. That shit was so fucking fun. <laughs> dude. It was so we, it was just so fun. Just maybe maybe hours maybe he's gonna take entertainment. This is the what they're freedom. basing this next news story on. What? This roll call sheet. Yes. <laughs> yes. C O D seven, Call of Duty seven, because I know you're you're you want it? Vietnam? Check. Voice call for a female who could speak English and Russian? Check. What's that mean? Call of Duty 7 might have a more global Cold War approach. So I heard, I thought maybe it wasn't going to be Vietnam and that they were going to be focusing more on the Cold War, but I didn't know they were basing it on the fact they called for someone who can speak Russian. Cold War, automatically. They called for, a, for an actress who can, who can speak Russian. Cold War. Dude, so I can't believe yeah. anyone would even ever go to this website now after this. GameSpot, after that huge Kane and Lynch oh my God, taking dude. money, taking it in the ass review, uh, they had to pull another review this week. Their global agenda review was pulled because uh, this guy went on to say, you know, he talked about playing the game and that you had to play the game for dozens of hours before you were able to unlock this kind of content. Well, it turns out the reviewer had only played the game for like six hours. That's a f***ing 50 DKP minus! Fucking what moron. a douchebag, dude! So yeah. they had to pull their review. Now yeah. they're waiting to put up a new one, and it pretty much—I mean—they go on to say, you know, we expect our reviewers to play a MMO for at least thirty hours to fifty hours, and this guy didn't. They've yanked his review. They'll be putting up a new one. But at this point, like, why? You know, everything no. you guys just do is fail. Is it the same? That's not even same the best game part. Spot. Same no, part. Honestly, not the same, the same reviewer because they fired. No, that they other fired that guy. He's got a really. We're, we're going to be reading about now. this guy getting fired next week. Yeah. But listen. That wasn't even the funniest part. Like, Force posted this in, and I read the whole thing. That was not even the funniest part, okay? Here's the funniest part, right? So, they go on to say, this is like the apology for, for you know, we're sorry we pulled this review. For those of you who are unfamiliar with our reviews policy, we generally expect editors who are reviewing massively multiplayer online games to spend a minimum of 30 hours playing them, and no deadlines for these reviews are ever set. Okay, I understand. Thank you for apologizing. And then he goes on to say this. Kevin, who is the guy who just wrote the shitty fucking Global Agenda review... Kevin spent over 50 hours with Star Trek Online before writing the review that we'll be posting later today, for example. <laughs> fuck you, dude! <laughs> yeah, Get, fuck that. Kevin, man! You're like, I'm gonna give a uh, fuck what that, Kevin has yeah, to say. What? All of his credibility has been fucking shit What? dude. Yeah! What? I, like, I, I, fuck <laughs> Kevin! Fucking. How are you gonna, like, back him up here after he just pulled one of his fucking reviews? I find it quite fine. I'm done. I'm done with that. I, I, uh, like, so uh, the THQ you know, president. Hold on. I just wanted. I just want to say that we've never pulled a review here on EG. I'm never. Not. We just blame Ed. Although, although people, idiot. although people will hate what I have to say, you won't pull my review. <laughs> I won't pull Ed's review. I, I stand Ever. by my eleven. <laughs> I stand by my fucking eight. Fucking Uncharted Two buggy. Although piece we of all shit. know that one was wrong, we would have pulled that review. Actually, no, I, you know what? Well, I, I take it back. I actually, I almost I want to print that just so I can pull I it. I take it back. I actually, we are officially pulling the nice guy Ed Uncharted <laughs> Two review you. officially, Fuck officially you. today. <laughs> um, but, but Ed, even though we're pulling that review, please know that Ed uh, did spend over fifty hours playing Bioshock uh, with, and there's no deadline for this review. So you know, <laughs> there is no deadline. <laughs> If it took me 50 hours to beat Bioshock, I'd be really disappointed in all myself. Right. So we talked about that THQ president. You know, he came out and he talked about all these games we're announcing and whatnot, but he'd also mentioned cloud gaming, talked about how he really likes the position he's put his company in, that they're able to build right. off more than just their WWE. And I was like, you know, that was kind of cool to hear him, you know, being so honest and never hear from him. EA came out today and talked about, you know, the, this DICE Summit that all these people spoke at and uh, talked about, you know, their strategy. You know, this is the things we have to do in the future. He's like, you can't just market the hell out of a game expected to do well. And they, like, pointed at Catwoman, their own game, their own GoldenEye Rogue Agent as, like, games that were terrible. We marketed the hell out of them, but no one bought them because <laughs> they were terrible. 
Okay. He <laughs> talked about how woman. FIFA, of he course. let FIFA just slide by year after year with minimal updates, and all of a sudden winning 11-7 beat them. Wait a so second. They, they said, had to update. Right? Or Pro Evolution Soccer, so yeah. they put a focus well, back. Wait a second. No, there's not. Neither. Activision's never made it. Soccer. Hold on. This is Electronic Arts. I'm oh, okay. About. I'm sorry. Yeah. But so they talked about how they focused on quality. I was just like, you know, that's cool to see EA coming in and admitting some of their own blunders. Okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah. And uh, the Activision president, Bobby Kodick, who usually is a dick, actually came out and was really honest and said, we screwed up with Harmonix. Said that they had, at the time, when they had released Guitar Hero, he didn't think nothing of the company. They had only made Frequency and Amplitude and Karaoke Revolution. He was like, you know, these guys are nobodies. Based on the games that they've made, right, they haven't right. been commercial hits. Even though Frequency and Amplitude yeah, were like yeah, huge. They were, they were cool, awesome. but yeah. they weren't Great commercial games. hits. Right. So basically he said... They can't really make a commercial hit. They finally did it with Guitar Hero. We're going to take it, and we're going to give it to Neversoft because they've been making all these Tony Hawks and all these kick-ass games that have made us a lot of money. We're going to give it to Neversoft and just let them, you know, knock it out of the park. Well, it turns out, you know, they, he had never gone to Harmonic Studio and met the guys. And he's like, if I would have gone there and I would have met them and I would have known the kind of personalities and passion they had, I would have kept them. I wouldn't have let Harmonix go. And it was nice of him to admit, you know what? I looked at uh, from a corporate jackass. aspect. All I cared about were sales numbers. But, you know, it's not often that they say, you know, I made a mistake. And I don't know. I just found that refreshing. I, you know what? Isn't that kind of an a, admitting that Rock Band owned your game? He said that Harmonix probably could have pushed them in new directions if they would have kept them. I think that's the bigger thing. Like, yeah, we, hey, we lost. You guys got Harmonix. Guitar Hero blows. Here, here was what his exact DJ quote, just this awesome, part man. that I thought. He said, if we would have met these harmonics guys and saw what they're up to, it'd be a different game today. It'd probably be a profitable opportunity for both of us, an opportunity where you would have seen even more innovation in the category. I mean, he says we might have seen them do even more if we had How kept How can them. you innovate you know, the game more? My favorite part of what he said was at the very bottom when he says a lot of times you get caught up in the financial details of the business. It makes you overlook what's really important, which is who's passionate, who's committed, who's inspired, and where's the next idea going to come from. El, El Grimey. That's our philosophy El as Grimey, well. Maybe, maybe you should stop using a dial-up to watch a show that's in HD. Bam. <laughs> Actually, Ed, it's more like 360 HD quality because it's not true 1080p. So you should at least clarify that. You know, <laughs> our stream's more like Final Fantasy 13 on the 360 because it could be better. So um, anyway, this is the kind of news that I need right now. Basically, one of my all-time favorite franchises. It was almost a bit ahead of its God, time, God, that was I a think. blast, just like Puzzle Fighter. Dude, back in the day when there was no such thing as online gaming on consoles, it did not stop us from rocking the split-screen action and going ape shit in Twisted Metal 2. Ape shit, like just ridiculous amounts of hours. Playing the fuck out of that game. Although there have been a few attempts to broaden the game way of uh, gameplay of Twisted Metal, none has come during a time when online was easily accessible. I will tell. I will say though, it was one of the best experiences I had on my PSP. Remember that was one yeah, of the first games you where you could, could log in you could. multiplayer. But last night at the AIAS Interactive Achievement Awards in Vegas, David Jaffe was presenting an award, and according to One Up, an audience member shouted out for a new Twisted Metal title. You know that jackass who has won too many dreams, Jaffe. We're going out with metal. And, and Jaffe responds, soon, bitch, eight or nine months. Hell That's yeah, awesome, dude. dude for awesome. the PS3. Fuck yeah. So, I, I, I mean, dude, Twisted Metal. Could you imagine if just right now you took even Twisted Metal 2, did an HD remix, and... And I don't know what Xbox you, you know, Live or maybe PS3 it's been a while or, since you played it, but Twisted Metal Black was awesome. It was awesome. It was. Although I still feel like the way that Twisted. You, do you remember what was so special about Twisted Metal Two? Wow, sweet Tooth. No, what was so special about Twisted Metal Two, which they kind of nerfed back in Black, was in addition to all the shit that you picked up. Remember, everyone had. The like combo moves, or combo moves, moves yeah, that you would do, yeah. right? Yeah. The freeze and right, and I think that that was like the, the ultimate gameplay because really? you they got good. That. They had that you, in the PSP version. What in the PSP version? Not black though. Black had it like reduced back a little bit. The PSP version was almost 
twist, twist the metal too. But like when you got the opportunity to like ramp up and then you know do your moves and then, God, fucking hate it. I was, <laughs> I'm all over it, dude. I'm so all over it. So uh, Alan Wake had better not suck, dude. Mark my words. Last week I said. You think it's going to? I think it might, dude. Well, Remedy Studios reveals that Alan Wake is pretty much a make it or break it title. And uh, says, to be honest, we're very much betting the farm on this game. We've created it since 2005, <laughs> and it's kind of like landing on a new continent and bringing the ships. Guys, you'd better make do on this continent. Survive. <laughs> so basically, he said they've spent so much time and money that if this game fails... It could be pretty much this game is, over. This for the company. is my question, dude. But this if is if you don't have faith in your game, why would you come out and even make a statement like? Oh this? no, he basically mm. he does have faith in the game, though. He said this company, we're putting our whole company on this game. But why would you need to come out and say it? I actually don't know. I'm like, sure it came I up don't in a think question, need to, dude. but he no thinks difference. it's good enough that he can bet the whole company on. All right, we'll here's see. what has me scared. I'm down with that. I'm scared about this survival horror. And I don't say this often because I'm usually sick of all the M-rated games. It's teen. Well, I don't know. That just has me a little scared when so a game that's going for maybe we won't Stephen have blood. King horror. You know, I'm sure it's going to be a different type of psychological scare. But at the same time, right. you know, it being teen really limits really limits how far they can go. I, I've got it. I've got to admit, I, there's. I'm excited for this game. I will tell you. I, I told you that totally Kotaku had a walk through the pills. first stage, and I was like, I was so engrossed, and I'm like, I practically know everything that's going to happen in the first stage just because I was so compelled just and reading it. I do think, I do believe that uh, that a lot of what people are saying in the chat is right. I think that it's going to end up being a little bit more like an action thriller than it is going to be a horror title. I agree, and especially because they talked about the first episode. The whole second half was hard as hell. It was like constant action. I don't. I'm not ready to compare Alan Wake and Heavy Rain. They seem like two different games, but I'm excited for both of them. That's for sure. So there's another reason why Alan Wake needs to not suck, and that's because Microsoft is looking for more than one huge title this year. In fact, Kotaku did a great piece on a very simple question: Is Halo Reach going to be more like a Halo Three launch, which broke records and sold millions in days? Yes. Or more like a Halo ODST launch, which took three weeks to sell as much as Halo 3, and a lot of that was because of the Halo Reach beta. Now, a definitive answer was never given aside from them believing the Reach beta will reach 3 million players and possibly more, but Bungie says that this will be their final and best Halo experience. I just wanted to hear from you guys. What Did, do you think? That thing is going to shatter records. You wh wh Why? I thought ODST would have... Put up numbers. That, it wasn't that, that big of like, a fanfare. Do, do you? I, I, don't know. I think I maybe they're fucking up by not putting God, four. Is there more next to it? Oh, you know? No, no that's it. <laughs> okay. that, that really blows me away that they're not ending on a number. That they're ending on like expansion pack two. You know, that's, we've gotten ODST. Now we've gotten Reach. And not only that, but they're they were talking about how they when that I don't think that Reach uh, is an Halo three pack. article be, they said over time they expect everyone to gravitate towards. Halo Reach. Reach because it's the Halo as they right. saw it, how they intended it. But right. It's like squad right. based. Like I just it feel I isn't Dude, it a totally be different awesome. kind of game? Look at the success of like Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, and like I don't know. I, it's I just that when it's people be... try to change their formula, they lose audience. And from what I understand, this is a change in the formula. I think leveling up your character, being able to run around with your friends, dude, it's gonna be fucking dope. Let's hope. I mean, Microsoft does really have nothing else huge to brag about. Well, they did say it was going to be the best game of 2010. I, I'm agreeing with you, Just 118. It isn't an expansion. Re reaches its own standalone game, dude. I, I That's hope. why I'm saying that, like, why isn't it's it kind of it's kind of like uh, maybe because it's a not? pre because it's a uh, I, and that is why. Okay. All I know is like the, the 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 beta better just kill it, dude. It better be like three maps. The beta is just going to be a multiplayer anyway. Yeah, three multiplayer maps that are just fun as shit. Well, to play, I, honestly, dude. multiplayer is not what's got me so pumped. It's the the darkness and the terror that they say they're going to bring back in the single player that has me excited. Because I know I'll darkness. play it for two weeks and then I'll be done with Halo like I am with every Halo that's ever come out. I uh, <laughs> I really don't care how great it is. Uh, yeah, I don't. I a couple people in chat were saying that they thought it would be bigger than Modern Warfare Two, and I disagree with that. Uh, specifically, really? it will not be bigger than Modern it Warfare can't Two can't because Modern Warfare Two got a lot of its success because it was multi-platform, and I don't think any exclusive can ever achieve like those numbers. 
Those numbers were, oh my God. I mean, I don't dude. care if you're Final Fantasy, yeah. God doing of War, a billion dollars, Fisher, like bam, we did a billion. Halo Reach, yeah, I just don't think that happens. I mean, do, will it probably sell more than Halo 3? Of course, it's got to. The install maybe, base Maybe is they're hoping, like, on release, like, everybody in Japan is just going to run out and buy a 360 and play Halo Reach and be like, yeah. Dude, all those people that were already no one in into Japan Halo bought Modern Warfare 360, too. though. Like, that's what you're forgetting. Like, that Halo Reach is not going to be a system seller. Halo 3 was the If Halo seller. Reach is like the first game on the 360, of course, you know, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Halo 3 was the system seller. I, yeah. 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 Um, so anyway, um, let's go on to uh, reviews. So I don't know if we're going to get to open phones tonight. It'll Hell depend. yeah, we will. You think we will? Really? I don't know. What time is it? It's <laughs> like fucking 7.10, dog. Oh, we got, we'll, have, we'll get time. 7.06. Plenty. I missed it every single well, time. Well, first we got to talk about day one impressions. Well, let's let's actually why don't you let's do just why don't we jump knock right that, into why don't we just knock those out and then do our review? Because actually, let's um do do the do the chat. Let's pad talk about first. some chat pads, guys. So Look, real quickly, Christmas presents. Real quickly, yeah, for Christmas, I uh, I've been wanting to talk about these for a while, right? Because I am the guy that hates that freaking hates you guys to do the like analog stick typing you know like i can't i can't handle that shit i do not like it at all i'm with you there so especially since i want to plug in my microphone just to say i hate typing i for christmas i was like i'm gonna in like <laughs> october i was like i'm asking for chat pads for christmas so i'll get why them didn't eventually. you just go buy them dude? because i was it, you I'm can get them at a used video game store for anyway like fucking eight bucks <laughs> So, first off, I want to say a lot of people, when I asked, what do you like better, 360, PS3, a lot of people said, you know what, fuck them both, give me a USB keyboard. To that I say, yes, a USB keyboard will always be superior over the chat pads. There's really no arguing that. However, yes, the USB there is. keyboard. Yes, a big ass freaking keyboard? I think a lot of people play at their desks, Shh, use a computer monitor. Like, the, I who's get, playing 360 at their desk? I like, lounge dude, in my couch. Like I fucking a population throw of my four. hand down my pants. Bro, grab a Miller High Life. I, you. Anyone who argues a USB keyboard is superior to the chat pad will get a foot in the ass from me if I see them in life. <laughs> it's superior. Um, anyway, but in terms of accessibility and ease of use, so here I've got the 360 chat pad. And I also got the uh, PS3 chat pad, which, of course, you're probably not going to be able to see that great. But um, I've never seen the this biggest, pad. Let me see the biggest. One. Hold on one second. Let me just like real Why quickly. I'm just going to. Exactly. And, exactly. <laughs> and therein lies basically the very quick review of both the chat pads. Taking a look at the three is 360 controller. It was obviously engineered to fit on the 360 controller perfectly. Perfectly. It fits in there perfectly. It still gives you room for your uh, headset underneath. And it does give the controller a certain amount of weight. Makes it feel good. That you really start to get accustomed to and like. And also, that weight prevents me from wanting to smash my controller as much because I, I know it's that much more deadly. It's going to hurt something if you right. hit someone Right, so with it. like for some reason... Now, then you've got... The, hold this for a second. So, then you've got this thing, right? Now, here's one of the most unique things about the Sony uh, chat pad. What? First off, um, and, and I got to say, you have to charge it independently. I hate that. But you do? It's got yes. this, like, virtual mouse, right? So, I can, like, use it as, like, it is a touchpad. That's annoying. It's not. That's actually kind of cool. It, you can navigate. That was the feature that made me really? want to get you it. Think, you can you navigate with cool? it. Like, it makes it like a mouse. It makes so it like, like a moving mouse. across the pad. It's, I mean, oh, it's, it's so, kind of okay. cool. Okay. Right? I got you. I got however, you. However, here's, here's the problem. It feels totally wrong to type like this, guys. To type like with the if the chat pad was down here, I'm holding on to these nubs and I'm like dick it dick it dick it dick it dick it like I am on this yeah, one, that, right? Dude, but it just... doesn't feel right. So okay, here is how I use my PS3 chat pad. Are you ready? All right, I'm playing a game. Oh look, oh someone just sent me a message. <laughs> Since it's Bluetooth, it doesn't have to be connected to the controller to work. Do, do, do. So, like, the chat pad for the PS3 is actually you, better off of the controller. Do you and like that feature that, better? Does it no, kind of no, no. Who wants do to have you, to grab it? Yeah. 
Look at this. If they would have designed it like as a little chat like that and I picked it up and used it like that, I would have been okay with it. But it doesn't make any fucking sense on the controller. It doesn't feel right. But when I hold it like this, I'm like, oh, okay, this works way better. I'm totally rocking the fucking, I'm totally, you know, this is great. It's perfect, blah, blah, blah. I know so, what you should just do. You know what? Just use a fucking microphone. What do you mean? I do, but I still get messages. Typing in a I don't, code. I don't. Typing have in that code. Headphone. That fucking annoying like on. code that you get. Beek a beek a beek a beek a beek. Yeah, same thing like with then, this. Like, dig a dig a dig Why do you need your controller if you're just typing in a code, dude? The battle of the chat pads. I'm gonna give it All to right. the 360 too because of placement alone. Placement alone. Yeah. Placement alone. If you think it's cool to be able to just like have your PS3 chat pad like this and put it off to the side, like that. Then you you know this thing works great. I mean, I use it all the time like this. I don't like that I have to charge it independently. I that's kind of annoying. That's too. Like annoying. I already have to no charge my Bluetooth and headset. I have to charge my controller. The weight, the weight of this thing is just the bomb. It's, yeah, it's it makes it feel more substantive. It becomes a it? permanent part of your thing, and that's yeah. what like that's yeah. what. So sorry, uh, PS3 ologist, but I I've got to give the one up to the 360 chat pad. The point being is that I'm glad I have both because I hate fucking typing with the analog sticks. But I I the PS3 or the 360 chat pad is like the fucking winner. So now I'll just say that well I'm, play, I'm playing powered. PS 13 I'm playing Final Fantasy 13 on the Super on. controller. The the 360 one is powered by yeah. the actual controller itself. It, it, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't even need, turn on until you touch yeah, it too. I it like It doesn't that. need power from a different source. Correct. So that is correct. So do you have a PS3 one? You no, they're the expensive one. as hell. Because of that touch screen. So I, I like it as long as I don't have to be typing on the fucking analog sticks. Um, so anyway, um, we will. Um, we will. Well, do you want to? You don't want to do Bioshock? Or you wanna, yeah, let's do Bioshock. I you can talk a little bit about StarCraft well, as it goes into you open know phones. I think we're going to have some people want to call in open phones. And talk and, about StarCraft. Yeah, I mean, like, we're going to say right. everything so people are going to want to say. You know, the show's about. been a 10 until that point. Oh, man. You know For what? Sakes. The moment you got God on, the show became it. an 8, dude. Because <laughs> I'm buggy. So <laughs> you, are, you are a buggy son of a bitch. <laughs> um, I, I have to tell you, there's something about Bioshock, you guys, that um, the early reviews, a lot of people were like, man. Yeah, hold on. Let's tell them right now. If you guys do not want any spoilers, you should probably wait to listen to the rest of the show because I'm going to talk about a lot of it. Okay. So, I'm agreeing with that. Okay. So don't talk about the bomb that goes off after the credits, so. Or the shark. Yeah. Or, or the, the shark. Or the shark to puss. We brought the shark to puss up earlier. Shark so. to puss. Mute for two minutes. Um, um, yeah, two minutes. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and go. So <laughs> I. Uh, so uh, first off, I'm going to say, you guys, um, I'm coming right out. I did not play a stitch of multiplayer. Um, and you know what? I didn't need to to give this game a I didn't must play, buy. I didn't play multiplayer. Yet. So I'm just saying that I Force did. was probably the only one who played multiplayer. I Miracle heard about Worker. it. Mir I heard Miracle people Worker liked it. it. I'm glad it. that it's good. But you know what? I was so satisfied with the single player experience. That's what I wanted out of Bioshock 2. That's certainly what I got. I played this game on hard. And as I was saying, I felt that a lot of people were criticizing the game because it's too easy. No, because it was uh, it was exactly like the first game. Oh yeah, dude. I read I read some reviews about that, like on Destructoid and like places like that. And People you know what? Like, talking shit, like, well, it's like the first game. Yeah. Bioshock one point five. One point five. And you know what? After playing through the entire experience, that's it, it's that's not a fair thing to say. If you say that, then you're saying Assassin's Creed 1.5. Yeah. Then you're going to be saying Crackdown 1.5. Then you're going to be saying, you know, like, it's not fair. Bioshock 2 stands so firmly and also pays homage so well to the first game that, you it know. It feels like it was the same team. Yeah, like it's, it feels it like the same team made the game. Four right. freaking teams all across the continent had to come together to make a sequel to that first game. You know, I was really scared about that. You know, when you hear when it, tons of freaking minds, you know, you got to be worried about the quality of the product. 
and uh, it felt like it was the original crew back at the helm, and and I like that that it threw you right back into that universe, and it, it's such a it, sweet dude. It just universe. felt so like comfortable and natural to pick up and play too. Like okay, I'm playing Bioshock too, but like I remember everything. I remember the city, like some places in the city. Like I felt like I've been through this or part all kinds of, this of references city, to you know? the first and, one. Like, I've been here and I've been there and I realize what I need to do when there's a big daddy out and I you know like it was fucking right it was right awesome, and dude. and they it's not like you were just playing the same guy with the same weapons over and over like I really feel like they they made the combat different because you were a big daddy well, and, and so, they, they came in knowing you knew how to beat these guys right we're gonna give a we're ton of them at you, you right. know we're gonna step it up a notch this time you know there's something I want to talk about though like. Is it just me or does it seem like footage. does it seem like the slicers hit you incredibly hard? Like do you remember fighting big daddies in like the first one and like it took you a long time to like fuck a big daddy up? But now you're a big daddy and like somebody can run up with like a pipe and like kill you in three that, Now you know, I actually you, heard complaints about how exactly did, are you a big daddy yeah, yet yeah, you can be killed like, that fast. How, how can I be killed that fast with like a lead pipe when I'm like in the first one, I'm having to like fucking send turrets after them, use grenades, like shit like that. But dude. at the same time, they prove your strength in a different way in the fact that, you know, how can you handle Splicers. 10, 15, Sorry. 20 dudes coming at you at the same time? And that way, they really make you feel like a big daddy when you see how much damage you can cause to the world and how much they can throw at you. You can still come out, you know, on top. You can hear me so, talking a little bit about it, as it relates to Bioshock 1's story, it, it doesn't except it does and I know that makes no sense at all but you play a big daddy uh, throughout this uh, throughout this game you are basically a uh, you you are bonded with a little sister and a new character who is mentioned in Bioshock 1 but isn't exactly is she? quite yeah she is like when? really I mean just like like an audio diary here or there and it's not that was one of people's complaints about yeah, the game. Like, is like, how did you have Lamb, who's so of, big? Yeah. She obviously had such a big impact on this game. You know, it doesn't make Lamb it doesn't was make mentioned much in sense. the first game. I she, I knew her name when yes, I heard it. Yes, yes. Uh, but maybe not to the impact level that she brought to Bioshock 2. Point being is that Lamb commands you to kill yourself as a big daddy. Uh, interesting scene, and, and that sort of sets off the, the story mode. And then you're playing through the game with the help of a man named Sinclair, and, uh, you know, similar to the way that uh, Atlas helped you out in the uh, the original game. And they reference Ad Atlas. Uh, many, many times. In fact, there's some really cool shit that yeah. you get. In, and you in learn sort about of Atlas. Like right, how he, right. Like, that was rad. Exactly. Right. So um, you wake up. You are brought back to life, per se. You don't know why, and thus the, the story unfolds. But uh, uh, Psychiatrist Lamb is basically the main um, antagonist of, of the game. And from there, the game unfolds in a very similar manner to the way that Bioshock 1 does. Now, does it have the... Do, do you guys feel that it has the... Um, the fucking what Depth. movie? No, the Sixth Sense type twist... It, does, it, it doesn't it, have it, but I don't think it needs it. Yeah, I don't think it, it had needs a satisfying it ending without having to resort to another gimmick. And they I really could have done that. And again. I think they did a good job tying it all together. I mean, kind of. I guess there was kind of a leap. Like, how how did she bring you back from the dead? You know, like how did that work? But then you learn right through playing as a little sister, which I thought was fucking rad, dude. Yeah, there was a, it was there really was a lot neat of awesome playing as the that. little sister because like you see the world in, in their a eyes, different way, right? And it was, right, like, completely different, like clean and friendly and masquerade balls and like right. That, that was pretty neat. So I mean, they they tried to tie it together. It's I, it was still a bit of a leap to be like, oh, I'm gonna use like people's memories and like your memory from Adam to like bring you back to life is how I gathered it you know well I mean it's no bigger a leap than thinking that there's a giant dude walking around in an underwater suit who picks up a little girl and puts them on let his back. alone the fact I, that I there can is make some leaps in logic city, you know right. for the for the you know right. the world that they've created I'm not gonna like nitpick the little ideas that they came up with the point is that it still feels like it's a Bioshock 2 world and I also like the fact that it's not a flashback no, you know, it takes like, place after part one. It's not right. something that happened, you know, where we can do what we want. They've continued the story, which I was right. kind of worried about, you know, them trying to find some clever way to make it end where part one started. And they don't do that. 
I liked I liked being able to run around like the the difference in levels too. There is actually some difference in levels, like being able to run around in the ocean and like. Yeah, I love that. I wish I underwater sequence. Now are hold on, sweet. chat's bringing up a question. I think it's a good one. It's from Blitz. Do you need to play the first game to understand a lot of what is happening in the second? And the answer is no. However, you will get spoiled. By playing the first game or the second game first, it's not like like Uncharted where you could probably play two and then play one. Maybe you wouldn't get the same thing out of it, but there are actually key plot points that are revealed about part one in part two through audio like diaries. Atlas well, do you want to know what's right. kind of interesting though? Is that if you remember, part one starts with you landing on that you know the towers coming out of the water, right? Part two ends, the last shot is that tower coming out of the water. Right. So it's almost like you could play part two and part one would start right where part right. two ended. That it's would kind be of a kind weird of cool. circle. That would be kind of cool. And I want to come back to that in a second because one of the things I want to discuss, and this is a reason why you need to, you know, hopefully you've played the game, is where they could go with Bioshock yeah, 3. Yeah, because I told you, I was like, I don't know if they're going to make a Bioshock let's, yeah, 3. Yeah, let's, I think they are. I'll tell you why in a second. Let's, uh, let's talk about, like, gameplay, guys. Um, you know, big part of the first game was a two-part thing. It was uh, it was weapons and it was plasmids. Plasmids are your special powers. Uh, there were several in in this game that, that were really great that were brought over from the previous game. Some new ones as well. Uh, but well, the one big thing about this one is you could you could be like. You could you plasmid could weapon, plasmid weapon, time. right? And in that, one, you could only do the plasmid or the weapon. Yes, yes. and switching. that one, like yeah. made the game. I mean, it really changed the dynamic of the combat to the point where you could do so many clever things in this game, yeah. like so many clever traps you could set up and ways to completely fuck guys up. And I really appreciate that. You know, you had mentioned you start out as a big daddy, and you're like, how oh, how are these splicers messing us up? I felt, and I played the game on hard, but I felt like when I started the game, I was a bitch. Yeah, I was a bitch. I was too. But but they did a really good job of like making you feel like more powerful. As I'm like, oh what? man, I kind of fucked those guys more, up. Yeah. Like, and now like at the end, you're just like, well, I am a big daddy. What did like, you? Okay, fuck did you, you all. find yourself using a certain combination more? That was weird. Than yeah, we had two totally different experiences. What combination did you? I use? I was fire. You I were her? love Holy fire. shit. So, so you're fire. You did fire and what? what I was did, your, like, I did weapon? fire and then I used, I pretty much used the machine gun and the slugs, uh, the rivets. And then like occasionally I would like to use my shotgun even though I thought it sucked really bad. Yeah. But but then when I got vampiric drill, I used the shit out of the drill. Okay, so, so I used hypnotism three and the freaking spear gun, dude. The spear gun is yeah, really fucking almost exclusively awesome. Dude. Exclusively wow, the that, whole time. Like I would just hypnotize big daddies. I would hypnotize the brutes. I like when I was like gathering with my little <laughs> sister. Awesome, I would dude. just like have like the splicers, like I'd hypnotize them all and they'd like run around and just like kill everybody coming in the room and then I'd just sit there over. And like if somebody came up, then I'd like spear him in the head and then go collect my spear. I was never out of ammo ever. And you want to know what I did was I focused on electricity. And as you got to level three, it zap one and then chain lightning. Right, right. And I used the shotgun the most. Wow. Zapping people and running up and shotgunning them. Because once you get multiple shots, crazy. more than but two. But that's so, so cool. I want to hear all of hear, us like, had different we have, experiences. If we get callers calling in about uh, about this game, I want to know what they're And I like what the fact that you, you can have, was, not so. only do you a lot have of guys power, ice all day. but you can hold like eight weapons. You know, when you can have eight powers and have them pretty easily to choose from the different ones. So I really explored more than I did in the last one. Definitely use plasmids more than I ever did in part oh, one. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. And then also, they do a really good job. You got the trap spears. Uh, you got the all the different... Rivets, like the, the mini, mini turrets, turrets were dude. badass. Yeah. I love well, the remote The whole hacking. idea of what you do is you, you take a little sister, and what a little sister does is you set her down to get plasma to Which get Adam from a character and all the spices would start coming at you. So knowing that you have these battles made us think ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Setting up traps. I would set setting up, up like turrets. rivets all around like in our room. And trap then, like, rivets. The, yeah. the, the trap the spears mini turrets like crisscrossing over it. Throwing and, like the and, like, trying to position the fight so you're buying then, like, flammable water. People. It was and awesome. That's one of those things where like when people are like, oh, it's just Bioshock 1 all over again. I'm like, dude, that was one of my favorite parts like that never that activity that task 
never got old. Yeah, and you would think you know, like, like after a while you'd be like, God, this is so boring. But like it was always unique. And, and, like, and you know, sometimes I actually I told Mike this. I'm like, there's a there's a what are they called? Not the plasmids, but the gene tonics 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 right. yeah so there was a tonic that actually made my little sister grow Speed faster up, yeah i took it off because you i did? was like it's not as fun like oh. be- i would actually choose which places to harvest based off of how fun i thought they would be to set up and fuck people up with so i mean i to me that was a huge okay huge plus to the game plus it allowed them to do more with the gatherers guardings where you bought your upgrades because you right. were getting more at them throughout the yeah. game. I like that. Okay, it was so a smart gameplay move. One play thing, move. one thing that drove me crazy in Bioshock One was hacking with the pipes, dude. Yeah, the pipes sucked balls, dude. So hacking now, it's I think it's they maybe made it a little too easy to hack. Hacking I don't becomes think so. pretty pointless because. You know, the robot turrets are supposed to see you and then send shit, and then you have to fight it, or those guns are supposed to tear you up. Well, now you have the ability to shoot a dart and let you auto-hack from a distance, which really made all the machines and security kind of pointless in this one. But it wasn't like you had an unlimited supply of auto-hacks. I did. Then I not, did. Uh, no, not auto hacks. Remote, but just the fact that you could peek oh. over a corner, shoot did a dart at. They were never you, a threat. Who played that? Did it you play on hard? Machines were never yeah. a threat. What? No, I played on normal. You played on normal too. On normal I too. played on hard and hack and kicked my ass. Like at the end of the game, there would be parts where I would like I would have to get my auto hack dart ready because if I failed on a safe, like shit would just come and assault oh, yeah. the shit out of me, right? So, but I would only have like one, maybe two at a time. In fact, one time I like, I'm like, oh my God, I got one more auto dart. I'm going to go ahead and open this door. Like, I hope to fucking God there's something good in here, blah, blah, blah. There and I used was, it. Man. And there was actually six auto darts and I was freaking out. Like, I actually gave. <laughs> the funny thing yeah. is, is that I would actually fail on those machines just so they'd send D- turrets at me because you, you got like the ability to auto turn them to your side. DJ you know, you could make uh, them friendly if just touching them. Right. So I would set off the alarm just so I could run up, touch two of them, and get them to be my Wait, which one? Friends. Oh, that's security? Yeah, and now that, but you also that. get the ability to heal them. I never used that I once. never used that you either. You got the ability to heal them, so I would get two turrets and then heal them and just keep touching them to heal. And I could keep them alive forever. The pla- they got names. Uh, for those that, the plasmids are your yes, superpowers. The, injectors, the injections the are like, that's when you're giving yourself more the, ease. Yeah. yeah. So uh, my well, favorite was fire. Here's I a couple just of things that people. here's a couple of things I think are kind of a drawback from okay, the sequel. Okay, because yeah. in that you know we don't really have the psychological moments. If you remember, like the the guy that you had to figure out his paintings, and he kept popping up in that weird apartment complex from part one. You know, it really wasn't a boss battle, but yet it was set up on the stage where you looked at the screwed up art and kind of played with there your mind. There was one. There was one, and it was in the. Um, it's towards the end of the game when you're trying to save all the little sisters, and it was like just a little puzzle, and you go in, and there's a woman painting a painting, a splicer painting a painting, and you see this guy's dead body, and you play you play his recording, and he's like, uh, I got to remember the order, like brown, brown What I'm deer, saying is like, that's still, that's just a little side like, off as opposed to a focus, and then we had the nice would you kindly moment from part one, and we had those like those breaks from just Havoc. You know, where those really don't exist as much in this. We had a nice in-boss battle for part one, whereas opposed to this boss battle is just like, we're going to throw everything at you, but there's no real yeah. bosses in this game. Yeah. So that's kind of a disappointment. It's not quite Mass Effect 1 to Mass Effect 2, but this one's definitely more focused on the action. It is. Than it was, you know, some of that, the psychological aspects. That I came see what part you're saying, one. though. There really isn't like a big boss battle. Like the boss battles are like puzzles. You know, like you gotta well, they're more fig- like you we're gotta gonna throw four brutes at you. Now we're gonna throw four brutes and four big. You gotta daddies. figure this out though, and then you'll kill these people that come at you. And then like the stage boss is like a master. Well, here's what kind of dis- that's what they're going for though. I don't think they're going for like badass bosses. It was all like psychological. Well, what kind of like, disappointed me was like, that in all of the screenshots and previews we saw for this, the big sister was like, "Oh my god, big." Bitch, she's going to screw you up. She's going to be the Resident Evil 3 nemesis. And when really. she appears, you kill her right away. Dude, and then you she becomes guys, like a normal boss. You played on normal. That's the problem. I'm like, I'm regardless, telling you guys. Regardless of how hard she was the first time, you still killed her the first time you saw her. Okay, I get you. I get and then you. she yeah, becomes a normal boss. Out, you find out that there's more yeah, I'm than one I'm not saying there's sister, not an excuse right? for it, but 
the thing is, is that the commercials made it look like she's going to be this big badass and gotcha. ends up being just another character. Right, right. Now, I didn't mind that, you know? Like, usually I would be bitching that there wasn't, but again, I played it on hard. I knew that I should have played it on hard because I felt like that was going to give me the most satisfying experience based off of what I had read. Um, I would suggest if you haven't played this game and you played the first one, play it on hard. I hope that you guys would play through it again because it really does change the game. I think it makes you even, forces you to play even Here's more. Here's what I did. And I'll Smart. do it again on the first one. Is that I play through on normal just to enjoy it, and then play through play it on it. hard. I'm going to get every single diary. You know, I'm going right. to. Are you going to play? Are you going to play evil this time around? Did you play good? Yes. Oh, I now played this good. time. Yeah. I'm going to harvest you, them all. Yeah. I played good too. So I want to. Well, how's the ending? And there, well, actually, that's something that evil. that's something that's that part two know. has that part one doesn't. There's con- there's like there's three choi- there's at least three major moral choices. Yeah. Where you choose kill or sur- kill or let live, and it people. impacts the ending. And it I does. Think. It does change the ending, and it changes like you let this woman live, and you're like, oh, she gives me this help throughout the game in these comments. Yeah. I never right. would have gotten any of this if I would have chosen to kill her. Right. right. So there is those moments that kind of make it neat. So I would like to briefly touch on. Well, uh, it, w- before we talk about Bioshock Three, our our predictions, whatever. Uh, do you guys just want to give a general like? Well, I mean, let me, I let would me say... talk quickly about what we didn't touch on. Okay. And that's oh, the fact Vault that Tech. we had digital extremes. We made Dark Sector focusing on just the multiplayer. Let me just very quickly say a couple things that it does really right and a couple things it does wrong. Okay. What it does really right is the stages and the setting is that you get thrown into an apartment, not even in the game. You're in an apartment. There's like a little, you pick which multiplayer character you want to play. There's like a message and you get a special story based on the guy that you chose to play as in a multiplayer. And as you unlock stages, you unlock more radio messages and it finds out it's 10 years before the game happened. Everyone's normal, supposedly. They're not addicted. You know, they're not all addicted and shit. And, um, you know, you're testing new equipment. We have these new plasmas, these new tonics. We want you to test them. So they kind of give you an excuse for the multiplayer. Right. And the multiplayer also gives the game an excuse to use some of the stages. Like, if you remember Bioshock 1, where there's like that Fisherman's Wharf. We have to do the photos for the first time. Before right. Yeah, yeah right. we didn't touch on that. Either. That's like a multiplayer stage. And you're like, damn, I remember that from, you know, part one. So they bring back some of the part did one you, scenes to play in multiplayer. Talk about how we use a video camera this yeah, time. No, instead did of a you camera. like the research the way they did research? Well, it kind of beat having to stop the action to take the picture as opposed to like getting to start it ahead of time. But yeah, you use a video camera instead of a photo in part two. I liked it. I liked I it. I think it was cool how you like unlocked things as you right. got more. So. But so, what multiplayer does, so we get a chance to visit those other locales. Right. What is different, too, is that multiplayer, you play as a human. You have a Tommy gun, not a big drill hand and stuff, so it feels really weird. It feels awkward. Um, but, you know, you're human using weapons, so it feels like a little bit of a different experience. The so weapons really are different than the ones that you just used in part one. And um, they have a neat idea in that, like, you get a pistol and a shotgun, but as you work up, you start unlocking the machine gun. Like, I unlocked the machine gun. And then as you start working up, you unlock the you know, the upgrades for each weapon. So there's all these incentives to play. You only get three plasmids. You can see there's tons of other plasmids. So they have that Call of Duty unlockables as well as like hack five turrets, kill five people with fire, kill two people at a time. Those type of like, you remember those little like perk streaks that are in Modern Warfare 2 2 that are awesome. It has a sweet capture the flag mode where within a stage, a little sister just randomly spawns somewhere in the stage and you've got to pick her up and carry her to a vent. But it's not like you just run and toss. You have to run, and she does her animation where she crawls in. So you have to be, like, defending that area as she gets into the hole. And it's a really nice – it's more like football than it is capture the flag. (laughs) But uh, it's a blast because all the action is very focused. And I love that. You know, here's a couple of things that does wrong. Okay. And that you're a human, and Bioshock loves to make you feel like you're your person. So you don't just strafe left and right. You kind of shuffle left and right. And so well, if you're the big guy, you're going to feel like you're as the a big, big guy. And you do get to randomly be the big daddy in it. It randomly picks someone to be a big daddy on defense. There's and a, it's sweet when you become it, that guy. But I'm saying you play as a human, it feels like the 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 controls feel, it just feels a little weird when you strafe. And I think it's huh, more because okay. of the screen, Bob, than it is necessarily because you're a person. But like you can tell you're a human and it's kind of disorienting as opposed to the fluidity. I can't tell if I'm moving up, right. down, or left, right. I, I mean, I get where you're coming from, shooter. right. Um, it has terrible spawns like you will sometimes spawn right next to the enemy or you and the enemy will spawn in the same room at the beginning of a game that that's sucks fail. So although that, that's totally patchable it, well and what it really it only sucks in certain moments you know what i'm saying you get that damn that su- that was cheesy right. but it's not like it's not constant enough time. to bring it down 
But the thing is, is that it is, it's not just tacked on. It's obvious they put some thought into it. The real problem is that I got Mag. It's not better than Mag if I'm going to play a multiplayer game. But it's pretty sweet package, you know, for those who, you know, only get that one game, you know, that spent the money on it, that it does have some legs and some incentive to keep playing as well as some achievements and stories to try to get, you know, bits but and pieces of But I think the most important thing of any multiplayer uh, game or what, you know, portion that you're looking at is how long are people going to be playing it for? That's the thing is that while this game is hot for the next month, I don't think it's going to have the legs that other multiplayers do. But at the same time, it's not fail like you see so right, often with right. single-player-focused games. That I, the, on one, the one multiplayer I always think of that's fail is the darkness. <laughs> that the one what? was bad. <laughs> the darkness. That, the first person no. controlling that was, oh my was something God, I didn't. Dude. Yeah, I see, I didn't get this game I, I will say, though, you need to try. I will try you it. You need to but try I the capture I, the sister. I had a lot of fun I with it when I played it. I didn't get it for multiplayer. I got it for the single Hell player. Hell yeah, story. and I was totally happy so. with it. So um, there, there we have it. So all right, um, I would say it is a great game. It gets high marks from me. Uh, you guys sound like the same. Um, Bioshock 3. Hutch says he doesn't think there'll be a third game, well, but I felt end, like the like, end she's totally like, set it up. We are how she's like. We are Utopia. We are. Well, she was like, our story has just begun. begun. You know what? So here's my here's my thought. Okay, I think that you will go back as a as a big sister, and you will ultimately try to completely destroy Rapture. But isn't Rapture already pretty much destroyed? Because she was setting she's off. She's going all, with a wrench. Every bolt is coming off that bitch, dude. No, but like she was setting off like detonations in the like. That's why you were trying to rush out. Not all she, of Rapture. Do you just remember? Just in her, just, remember just, just in her complex. Her garden, that's her above the complex. chasm or whatever. Okay. Yeah, you're not trashing all of it. So you're gonna go back into Rapture as a little sister. They could, I mean, think? they could set it up. They or could as set a it up big for you sister. So I, it's just, uh, it's just my my thought. I don't know. I mean, now that they've introduced. Well, I mean, if they wanted to, I, they still have room for the flashback. This game wasn't it. We still, well, yeah. I mean, what we happened? Still could what do happened? The fall of Rapture. We have not seen how it got right. to its current condition. Yeah. Right. What happened after one? Like, what happened to your guy? I don't remember. At the end, you're of like, I, I remember seeing you like, you're like saving girls and hanging out with them in like a, right. a daycare or something. Remember, like the girls <laughs> you that saved you them save, all. They yeah. Become your so daughters. what happened to you that you become a, a you babysitter? Be, are you the big daddy or not? In two, are you? No, I don't think you're still. You don't still have that equipment on at the end of when, once you get to the good ending. Yeah, I know, but who's Delta? Who's the main person? And who's like the Delta character? Like, no one. You don't really know who he is. He was the first big daddy. He was laying no. dead through part one. He was or, the, or out of commission. Yeah, he was the first. No, I, well, the first Delta. He was the first Delta. He was the yes. first Big Daddy. He, he wasn't. No, the first no, Big the, Daddy would be the, the Deltas. Alpha. The Deltas were supposed to have that super strong bond with, with the, the little sister. So maybe that's were what the you, Deltas were. Were you Delta? Like because you had the From bond. The first game? Yeah. Because no. you, what happened to that character people. then? He's, he he went, got he off left. the island. He left. He's he having left. his own happy life. He's but left. shit was still going on in the city even after he left. Okay, so there's you, room. There's room for a game. Did you there. know that there's oh, like, there's tons of room. One of the things we thought was hilarious. I was telling Weed about it. Is that did you know there's a secret achievement? You know the golf club that you take to Andrew Ryan's face in part one. Yeah. Well, you know you see a robot of him in part two. Uh huh. And there's a golf club by him. If you telekinesis the the putter into his face. You get like an achievement for nine irony. That's a thing. <laughs> Instead of nine, there's iron, a lot of awesome. hidden I love achievements that. awesome. in the game. Like a lot of hidden achievements. Oh yeah, there's so. a lot of. And there's an excuse to explore every nook and cranny. Someone asked me an achievement whore. Yes, uh, PS3 or 360, 360 hands down for me on this one. Like, I played the I, I, first one I, yeah, on the 360. I I the controller felt the best. You know, for honestly, me, like, I think it's more like console or pc because pc had the same issues that bioshock one had where they did fake widescreen they've uh, fixed it again but i can't believe after making the mistake on the first game they would come out and do and, it again and do it again it, it is a little it's bit a last ridiculous. minute change to the code not so. like we didn't expect you to catch us we only have 
20 minutes. Do we want to open up phones? I thought you were we'll going to talk a little I bit about this. I mean, how is your StarCraft like OMG the long? The greatest I mean, game ever. I just, no, I mean, it's not OMG long, and we've already talked about a lot, but I fi- I figured Good, uh, I could at bit. least there are people uh, I'll at least minds wanna know. open up the... I'm more blown away by hearing the phone. size of the beta, that the beta comes with nine maps. So it's 1.6 gigs. I, I got a key after, like, that, well, frankly waiting. 1.6 I don't know why that feels gigs. small. A beta? And, uh, nine maps? Nine maps. It's multiplayer only. It's no single player. And guys, first and foremost, the game looks fucking unbelievable. It really does. And it's like they nail Stark the StarCraft feeling, you know, with with that. It's like you know how you guys know that like people that played Stark or played Counter Strike one point six like don't like Source because it doesn't play like Counter Strike one point six. Th- there Listen, will be it's those kind of people. hard to screw up a point and click game from a playability standpoint. Dude, you know what? Tell that Does to it- all. No, 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 no. Tell that to the guys that make Command and Conquer. Tell that to all Command these companies. Command and Conquer still Hold feels on. the same. I was able to jump Tell, right into it. But you know what? It doesn't matter about how it feels. It also matters about how it's balanced. It matters about how this unit counters this unit, and there's like this perfect trifecta of fucking units and buildings, and the way in which you build all of them. You don't need to scream. I was talking about controls. I didn't know you were going into like AI. And but that's and but like. that's what that's what set apart every RTS from fucking StarCraft. Is like, you know, okay, Command and Conquer has a great single player campaign where you mass units and then go beat the shit out of a fucking base and then you're like, oh, happy. But, you know, like when you look at what StarCraft actually is, you look at that phenomenon that is StarCraft, isn't it about the competitive gameplay? So uh, you're telling me when you play StarCraft, it's not a matter of like kind of turtling till you've amassed a bunch of units and then pushing Fuck forward? Fuck no. It's about like, well, maybe I'm going to do that this game force but you know i'm gonna send a, a little scout to his base and notice oh shit he's he's building two gateways so he's gonna probably be sending a bunch of units at me so i'm gonna figure out something to stop that from happening and then counterattack. i mean you know like starcraft guys are like well yeah that's been brood war for so long you know like duh but you look at to me it excites me because you take an update to an unbelievable game and you put it in the hands and in front of the faces of all these people and like they don't anymore look at it and go oh this game has 13 year old graphics they're now like holy shit this looks great that's what I want to know is there more behind the scenes other than graphics yeah like graphically it, it looks awesome yeah there's right? that I mean if you're asking is it exactly Starcraft 1 with new graphics I mean yes and no there's a ton different in fact there's actually well, things what's the difference Well, like different units, the way that, you know, different building happens, the way that they've like changed the AI of your units that gather your minerals and stuff. And they 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 try to find a nice balance, a nice medium between how do we keep this as a competitive game? And then how do we also like bring Ed into this? Like somebody who doesn't like these games. Right. And how do they bring me into it? They make some of those functions that were more tedious a little bit more like you don't have to worry about them that much. So they they, they nubbed it. So what do you bit. focus more on? You focus more on fighting, Just and producing like, units, and like. But no, like you pro, like if you and I are playing, you're one race, I'm another race. Like you're you command and conquer has ingrained in you this idea that the way you win is by making more units than the other player. But what they've done is they've added an assortment of new units and not like it's anything new to StarCraft, but like maybe I'm Terran and I take my Reapers who who are these guys with these jump packs and I go in behind their base and I start fucking up your mineral line, right? I mean, that is what StarCraft is. It's like you try to do things to stop them from making money and while you're doing that, you're building units and you're getting ready to fuck them up. They're doing the same thing I'm still confused on how that's different than me trying to take out opponent's harvesters. While still trying to build as many units as I can. Because anyone can play Command and Conquer, fucking do Scorp spam, and that be the end of it. Command and Conquer in a competitive universe has never had the balance and the sort of... the. So you're telling me I'm not really going to notice the difference until I get in at a super professional mega level. To me, it's probably just going to feel like the same. No, you know what? If you, when you play the single player and you fucking mass Marauders as Terran and you're like, this is awesome, then great. That'll be the StarCraft you experience. 
what I'm saying is that I believe that more people will get drawn into how amazing of a strategy game this is. You think so? Not just the people who are already at that level. Yeah, I do think so. Because, I mean, I've, I've played them, and none of them have really compelled me enough to want to try to get to that level. You know, it's been the enjoyable two-week new car smell. See, now, Zeno, I'm done. Gino Z-Strike says, if you don't play StarCraft Beyond Casual, you'll never know what it's really about. And, like, that sucks. But no, no, no. You know what? That that and and maybe that's, that that kind of sucks, dude. Maybe like, that's right. But you know, like, but but hold on. Like, I don't. When you look at StarCraft Two, they're not idiots. They know what a phenomenon StarCraft was on a professional level. And you know, like all the college kids that play like we did back in the day, and all of this shit. You know, like they know that's there. I think that I would hope that people being reintroduced to a franchise that obviously are g fucking, this is going to be on everyone's PC that even knows the name Blizzard, right? I mean, I, I'm I not going to argue so. with you being one right? of the biggest PC so, games next a while. I think that what my biggest point that I can make about StarCraft 2 is that I feel like if I said, guys, this amazing Jadon game here from Bird War, it's on. We have to watch this. You would watch the 1996 graphics, and you would just be like, "It's not that great." But you know what? If it's like, I'm going to show you the same match in StarCraft II and like explain what's happening, you're going to be like, "Holy fuck, that's that's pretty awesome." You know, like it brings a new layer that you would normally just dismiss. And is that a part of it, watching replays? Is that a part of Battle.net, like a big feature of it? It Actually, the way Battle.net, it not only does it keep track of every game you play, like it keeps a recording of it. I'm sure there's an option. You could set it, whatever. But it also does, it shows you things like you can go back to the games you played and you could see like, I built this unit at this time. And you can like compare your progress against your opponent and go, man, right there at about five minutes, that's where I keep fucking up. Like, I need more units by the five-minute mark. You know, stuff like that. It is a strategy game, though. It's like, it's no different than playing chess. You're probably not going to appreciate chess unless you understand, like, the fundamental opening moves. You know, really understand how you can attack and how you can retreat with your units. You know, like, otherwise people are just like, that's a nerdy game. But you put some great graphics to it, and I know some StarCraft guys are going to hate for me to say this, but you put some great graphics to it, dude. And suddenly you got this whole new group of people suddenly interested in what's going on. Like great, great example, street fighter. Look at the competitive scene. And since street fighter four has been introduced yeah. fucking exploded, exploded. Well, uh, the Starcraft community is already fucking massive when it comes I'm not to a gonna pro lie, dude. I, I, I do want to see, I, think this I, is I do, do want to see some Starcraft two matches. Cause I, I did enjoy what I saw at WCG events, you know, like Singapore, Milan, you know, like, you and know, there was a big crowd and people were excited. And I like feeding off the crowd's energy. The game itself to me looked boring as shit, but like seeing the crowd get all hyped and all the little Korean girls, like, Oh, Going crazy, yeah. I like, mean, I mean, he's got that, a that was exciting. So, like, I mean, if it's gonna draw a bigger crowd, then that's awesome. And 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 I don't think you know. I knew someone would said, "Well, wheat, you know, Warcraft three brought graphics that Starcraft didn't have." The problem is, is that Warcraft three completely fucking gimped the RTS experience by adding heroes, adding a fucking unit that never dies, and when he does die, all your other units don't mean shit. That is not how you play StarCraft. That is how you play dumb RTSs. T tell, Sorry, I, I actually tell, like, really tell, enjoy. Like, the thing is, is like I don't. Warcraft 3, I've, so, I've never sorry. played StarCraft. And like I've, I've never been interested in RTSs. And I think I fucked myself by putting my first RTS was like Aliens versus Predator. Aliens wasn't versus it? Predator. And oh I was oh like, my yeah, god, that's really fucking, what you are basing your exactly, worst, your thoughts exactly. on the whole genre on. Oh my god, it's like fuck, it's like if you eat something bad, dude. You're like, I'm never eating that shit again, dude. Like. Well, I'm glad I didn't because my first try with sushi, I fucking wanted to vomit. Now it's one of my favorite foods. I, you know, maybe what we need to do, you know, I guarantee you like Team Liquid, or Team Liquid.net or something will have an early StarCraft 2 like beta thing, right? Maybe one of the, they'll, they'll have some tournament and when they get it done, we'll like, we'll watch we a high level replay and explain what's happening and, you know, see what you think. Yeah. 
I don't know. I like watching Tasteless commentate. He's a pretty funny cat. I think I've seen him naked a couple times. <laughs> 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 hey, that's more anything. than a lot of other guys I, that I just have man. the strongest feeling that this is going to be one of those games where I just get owned you know like I never get to experience yeah, that well that's, that's so late to and, the party and you know what you bring up a good point right that is what that is then they know that going into this they're going to have the all of these guys that have been playing Starcraft for years and then they're going to have all these guys that are not that so within Battle.net they've not only got you know they tout the best matchmaking that any game has ever seen before so they're going to be able to like take all the stats of all the games that you're playing and they're going to be like we're going to match them up with a guy that has similar stats they're going to try to find someone that makes the game more enjoyable because he's at your level. Like, you got to work for your wins still, but you could also lose. Let me, let me you know? ask you something. You know, not to change the subject, but when you sit down at your PC, how fast do you find this opponent and start your game? Like, how long Seconds. is it before starting it? Seconds. It is. Yeah, it's fast. And you know what? I'm playing beta where there's only a couple thousand people playing, and it was fast. You know, what granted, about, yesterday okay. I played is there, the same guy twice. Is there, but I like is there like a ranking system right there's now? A, there's, so a, like, there's a there's a there's so like yes. I don't get thrown in against like freaking yes yes they do you do here you do practice like, matches uh, if you're like coming in like I'm a new player so you play practice matches and then they take your stats from that and that's when they start applying like where you're at and okay. stuff. Uh, the ranking system is going to be better the more people that are playing it. Right, you of know, course, obviously, uh, but I think that it, you know we sort of have to look at Blizzard, and they haven't ever really let us down. And when they say we're going to bring the best matchmaking, how system long does ever, a match take for you? Um, I've been playing matches at about twenty minutes, and and honestly, I feel like they're I feel like some of those games are long. Now, have let me tell you one? something else. Yes, but let me tell you something else. Right, I've won custom games. Okay, I've not won a single. Not custom game, and here's why. Do you mean like a ranked and a player ranked, match kind right, of? Right, right. So you're, when you say that you are a new player, what they do is they throw you on a novice map, okay? Novice map is just like a normal map, except at the entrances of both people's base, there's like this massive boulder, and it has a shitload of fucking hit points, right? Well, I'd like to think that I'm at a level where I can, like, I can put down an early game real nice. Like, I can, like, play an early game, right? But because there's this big fucking boulder here, I there is no early game you're in these to, games. Like, build units you to take that boulder down? You are forced to play. You're basically forced to sit there, mass units, exactly what you're talking about. And it's like, this is stupid. You know, the moment I play a custom game against the guy... And it's like, I can use early game tactics. I, I, I actually do well. You know, like, I'm just, I'm not, I didn't join uh, the, it to, like, be playing these macro games. So I'm going to be glad when I'm done with that. I got one more of those to play. But it's just fucking stupid. I think it's a horrible idea. I think I should get the, to choose whether I play on these novice maps. But I mean, it, like, defeats the purpose of how you're supposed to learn how to play StarCraft. Like, you do not play StarCraft by, ma by just, like, turtling up and teching. I mean, maybe that's going to be your strat. But when you put two big Strat fucking boulders with. there that are just like, you know, it doesn't make any fun. So I'm going to do really good on the novice maps and then my shit will so, fall apart. Um, probably. <laughs> we have time for like one call. I don't know that we're even going to have time. And it, uh, no, we weren't talking about Bioshock. Sorry about that. I don't I don't think that, that we're well, is the bi was the Bioshock. The Bioshock thing was up there the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and actually, you know what? Fair enough, you guys. Maybe, Maybe I should just know. Bioshock I, the, RTS. These guys are right. I should. I. I. And and McMurray, you're right. I mean, it is a good way for a newbie to sit there. You know, so is playing the AI. I should. Next time, I promise you guys, I will go in and I will play Terran because I've been playing Protoss on those maps, and I could just fucking lift the barracks and go in and finish that shit. So I'm down. I got you. I don't even know what the fuck you just said to me. I know. He's like, dude, you can totally <laughs> lift the barracks. <laughs> Terran, Protus, but duh. Each race has... You got floaters each, in your fucking no, scuzzy? No, each race has very unique <laughs> properties, and one of them is, is you know, the Terran can lift its building. They have oh, the okay. spaceship, so they fucking lift buildings. So you could lift a barracks, move it over to their base, and build shit in their base. Okay. I saw someone See, in chat asking that, me for my thoughts on Meg, and I just want to let you guys know that I've only played it for three days. I'll talk more fully about it next week because I hate talking about shit, you know, with so little time under my belt. Just wanted to point that out. Thanks. Now talk to me about being able to use these protists to totally jack their barracks from underneath. 
<laughs> that strat rocks, dude. It's the Terran. You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, I don't. You, you know what? You guys are just proving to me that you are the fucking stupid American gamers, dude. I will play the Let shit. Let me shoot out. something. I, Let me shoot something. Don't say that. Don't say that because I will play the shit out of the single player. It takes brain to play StarCraft. I'll tell you what, dude. And you know what? America. Gonna, fuck yeah. We are going to. Um, we are, we're, you can guarantee that live on three, maybe not so much EG and definitely Colin Brawl. We're going to be talking more about StarCraft 2 for sure. So Sunday, uh, make sure to tune in. We'll be doing coverage of the Silent Gamers Quake Live tournament as well. And we're going to have some special guests from the Street Fighter 4 community. Also be talking about StarCraft 2. So eat shit and die. And I know you're going to want to see it anyway. Well, I'm not. I I don't think I'm not dissing it. I just know it's going to be the same experience I have with every RTS that comes out. I'm gonna love the single player. I'm gonna play it for a week and get just freaking owned, anally raped over. And maybe if I actually f can feel success in this one, if it teaches me like you do, it'll be a different experience. Well, you I just know feel what? Like I, I mean, the competition gonna, out there. Yeah, I understand, and you're not gonna experience success playing against the guys that are on Team Liquid or playing against the guys that no, are playing No, I'm saying Starcraft if the battle net links me up with people, like, I don't mind exactly. losing five times you know in a row to puts would, me with someone else who's lost five times I in a would, row. I would like to say, based off of what I've played so far, that you will get that opportunity. And I think and that will I'm change I'm okay it, with it. You know? so not only that, but I mean, it's freaking we'll Blizzard. Biggest PC game forever. Like, who's not going to get it? Into the wannabe, C, I agree. It just doesn't have the RTS player's mentality. I, I, I feel I feel like that's... I'm sorry that I'm a dumb American who loves to play shooters. You are. You are a dumb... <laughs> you, are both, you are both dumb Americans that <laughs> like to play shooters. And, uh, Fuck you, there dude. You go. <laughs> All right. I... We Is done. Any uh, <laughs> so I uh, guys, yeah, uh, I've uh, I've uh, there's I've seen a bunch of Team Liquid guys. Actually, some guys that are helping me out in the StarCraft uh, uh, two strategy uh, forum. So thank you. And uh, I'm excited if you're, to see if you're in the beta, go so. play or go check out TeamLiquid.net. I have like I I guarantee you Dan, this I weekend I will start Bassel. stomping noobs just Ooh, by visiting. I, I that have Rogue site. on tap though so. at work. You don't believe me? No, I'll take the bass. We got we got schizo five nineteen here. You can tell us into Hold the on. show. He's I see the alcohol coming yes, out. Yes, someone they, have a lighter. On missed, them? I don't. I don't have one. Lighter? But it's time to end anyway. Anyway, guys, uh, uh, big props to those guys at Team Liquid. Seriously, uh, they they helped me out tons. So with that being said, uh, next week, talk a little mag. Talk a little aliens versus predator potential game of the year. <laughs> God, dude. I, I, hey, hey, I will ah, tell you. Listen, I, as of right now, if I were to review Aliens vs Predator tonight, it would get a good review. Are you fucking bullshitting me? No, I'm not me, bullshitting dude? you. So we'll have, I mean, I need time to your fucking dumb piece. <laughs> have you played it? No, no. I'm then not don't going comment to, on it. Dog. Don't comment on it. I. Uh, one thing I do want to say: I don't think Bioshock Two will be game of the year. It might get an no, honorable. I don't it might get nowhere near. It it's might nowhere get near it Mass might Effect. Get an no, honorable yeah. mention, like yeah, you know. No, I, I don't. I don't even know if it'll get that. Really? Not with Mass Effect. Not with Heavy Not with Starcraft. Not with Battlefield. Not with the Last too, Guardian right? and God of War Three. The Last Guardian. It's going to be a tough one between The Last Guardian and God of War 3, but I think God of War 3, dude. Is God dude, of War 3 won't even be Tuesday. on anyone's list. Dude. I'm telling you right now, Whatever. God War will be forgotten about by the end of April. No way. I don't believe that. I don't either, dude. I do not fucking <laughs> believe I, I that. I know I'm right. I, I do not believe I, that. I will put my reputation on oh, the line dude. right now dude. that God of War 3 is going to appear yeah, in anyone's shit. Dude, I love it. I love it. So... We'll have to figure out. We'll have to kick. <laughs> I did not say Final Fantasy 13 was game of the year painkiller. Stop putting fucking words from my Dude, mouth in the your PS3 ears. The PS3 version might be game of the year. Say. PS3 version already is game of the year over the 360 version. No, the 360 version isn't going to be fucking winning any RPG game of the year. That's for God's name. Sure. Well, it's too bad that all the magazines are going to score them the same. You watch. No one's going to be like, oh, my, my nice little hair filter on the PS3 scored it an extra point five. Listen. All right. Everyone knows that Twilight New Moon seen it is going to be fucking game of the year. So let's just shut the fuck up and leave. I'm it actually go. I can't believe how Shit addicted good, I am dude. to it. You know what? I two inches called it. Uh, I think I got to agree with them Force. I think I think this week. I'm sorry, but 
it's it's your turn to go. Three votes were enough to make the fifth person voted out of the game. Travis spoken. Eleven are left. Who will be voted out Peace, tonight? Peace, bitches.